Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing? Mm. Hey, well, how are you? you? All right. Hey, Louise. Hi. Hey, Alexander, Annie, and Violet. Anthony. Hi, everyone. Um, trying to get my picture straight. I've been changing another picture to me. <laughs> hey, I'm trying to get it straight. I like you. <laughs> yeah, Bruno Mars. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Bruno Mars and Silk. What's the song? I think of the song. Who was that song? I can't I'm remember that song. song. Yeah, um, mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Handle. Oh, mm. Lord. Hey, Maddie. Edward. Hey, everybody. Yes. Hello. Hi. Hey, this is Dawn. Oh, Bruno song. I can't remember that song. I, I yeah, have to hi. mute myself. Okay. Hey. And main millions. <laughs> yeah. Just, and I don't know why I can't think of it. Me either. <laughs> Lord, crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi, Diane. How you feeling, baby? Diane. Oh, hi. Yeah. Oh, she's taking a treatment. The treatment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hope you feel better. Yeah. Oh, let me take my medicine. Yeah, I oh, just took mine. Yeah. I'm glad oh. you reminded me. Okay. Oh, where is my medicine? Don't you don't you hit me again? I'm telling you, you're gonna get a whipping today. I don't know what your <laughs> problem is, but you're gonna be living in the street. <laughs> I know they do that sometimes. They act, do that. They do want attention. Run over here, Run over here. It displeased with us. <laughs> well, I'm right now. They went through. You going? You going? You going to Aunt Sandra's house? Come on. <laughs> Are you going to Aunt Sandra's house? Yeah, you gonna pack her bags for the weekend. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, Brenda. Morning. Hi, Brenda. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, good. <laughs> what you eating, Brenda? A bagel with cream cheese and a cup of coffee. I know. That I want to a cup of coffee <laughs> so bad. I know that's what I'm sitting thinking about. <laughs> hmm? oh, oh, my. oh, um, Brenda. I got yeah. uh, I, ca I called yesterday to the food thing 
and she called me back around seven o'clock and told me it was Thursday or Friday. I said Friday's fine. Okay, that's Which good. Food? Which, Which one? Food, food? food for all DC. All DC. Oh, yeah. She bringing me mine tomorrow. Yeah, la uh, last time they bought me some uh, bananas, and. Uh, I'm hoping they'll bring me some bananas this time because uh, I hope they do this time too. Yeah, they bring me mine tomorrow too. Mm -hmm. I told them they very good and I enjoy their service. Yeah, I told them they get fresh items. And she said thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, my Let's son, my, think my I son. got a cabbage. Oh, you did a huge cabbage. Oh wow. Oh yeah, I got a huge cabbage. I so you know what I did? I divided it in half. It cooked, uh, cooked it, and I took Curtis some, and uh, the other one I shredded and made some uh, coleslaw. Oh, that's yeah. what I. That's good. Uh huh. That's good. My son told me they on don't to call it. them on Saturday. They don't do on weekends. I keep forgetting the. Call. They only do Thursday and Friday. Delivery. Friday. Oh. Delivery. They deliver it on Delivery. Thursday and Friday. Yeah. It's only only once a month. Mm. Yeah, and you have to call them that week that you got to order. Mm. They, if it was the third week of that month, then next month you'll call them the third week. Oh, okay. So like that. Uh-huh. My you. son turned me on to it. He said, Mom, call this on. Food for all DC. He said, because the lady was telling me about it. I said, oh, yeah. I said, well, I'm going to tell the clients about it. He said, yeah. Yeah, that's good. You know, this we're, you know, really good resources for each other. Yeah. Uh huh. Definitely. I was going to ask y'all the um, difference. How do y'all like, which one y'all like the best? Meal on wheels or, or, um, um, what is it? Um, Mom's meal. Mom's meal, yeah. I've which never one? gotten meals on wheels. Me either, but I was wondering which one y'all like the best that gets you. I, I think meals on wheels, they bring you whatever they're bringing, whereas mom's meals, you have a choice of all the meals that <laughs> they uh, have. I get right. 14 every two weeks, and I have a choice, so you can switch it up and get ones you like and leave the ones you don't. I think uh -huh. that's one of the benefits of mom's meals. Uh -huh. Hey, Miss Mary. Uh -huh. Miss Mary. Good morning. You, you on mute. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing? I hope you're good. 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 You too. Hi, Alex. Oh, Hello, everyone. How are you? Good morning. Uh, I want to ask you, uh, ladies. You know, I'm on the uh, advisory council for the legal uh, council for the elderly, and uh, even though I'm representing Ward Seven, people are bringing ideas. So, any ideas that you have, if you don't want to um, say it online, I understand that. I'm gonna put my phone number in. My um email. email, yeah, my email. I'm sorry, my brain went to a pot there for a minute. Oh, don't feel bad. <laughs> All of us do that at times. Uh, you have any ideas or concerns that you uh, uh concern about that you think the legal counsel of the elderly can help you in ways that you want? I can. You can put your ward if you want to. You don't have to put your ward. You don't have to. I don't have to tell your name. Uh, uh, you can just, tell my name. Okay. Because <laughs> I want to tell you, about these wild dogs running, my neighbor's wild dogs running and chasing people. Well, that that's a concern. Well, you in my ward anyhow, aren't you, Sandra? Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, you can talk to me. But uh, any, anybody that has anything that's, that's concerning them about staying in your house or getting some help uh, or whatever that you think they can help you, just give me a call. I'm putting it in the chat now. Okay. okay. And, uh, uh, somebody something. 
Mm-hmm. Isn't it a law that your dogs have to be on a leash? Yes. Okay, I'm calling the dog, Pam. Mm-hmm. Call 60 first. Because this is ridiculous. My my granddaughter and them and my aide, they can't even sit out front. Them dogs are charging after like, them. They like that in my neighborhood. They're just I'm sick of just it. Running oh, around. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to be chewed up by no dog. I'm going to table that dog or beat that dog with their back. Hey. Mm-hmm. Well, no, don't beat them, Santa. <laughs> I ain't trying to get chewed <laughs> up either. Yeah, I know. They ain't this, no little this, ones. That's called the uh, people rescue people. I'm a wild dog running through the neighborhood. No, it's my neighbor's dog. There's two of them. Well, it's more than two. Well, they are still come and get them. They see them running through the neighborhood. They done bit somebody already. Oh. Well, they didn't report it to the police? I don't know, but apparently not because they still running wild like that. She lets them out and they run rampant. They see somebody you turn your them and attack them. You live in a house or apartment? House. Oh, oh. Because I was saying if you live in an apartment, you can tell the you know management office. Mm-mm, I live in a house. Oh. Well, I would call the, um, the people, let them come out and get them. They'll get them. They don't care who dogs they are. They'll, they'll, they'll probably try to attack them. Oh, they got something for them. <laughs> I got something for them, too. I got some mace, too. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, that'll sit them down a minute. Hmm. Well, why nobody don't speak to her about it? They did. And she don't care. Hmm. It's crazy. Oh. Was she a young person or older? No. She's not really old, old, but she ain't really young. Oh, well, she, she, got, the, she know better. Yeah, yeah. she know better. Mm-hmm. That's how they be around here. These guys, they just let them dogs run in. I'm like, my aide <laughs> was sitting on front my porch. And mind you, I have a ramp. They charged at her. Mm. Yeah, well, I would I, I would call three one one and tell them yeah, to report have a... at the three one one and then report and then ask them for the dog uh, control to come out. Mm-hmm. But they need to know that the dogs are, are attacking people. I They'll got an address too, and that'll yeah. stop your aid from coming because she's probably like, I don't want to get bitten. Mm-hmm. How's everyone doing? Uh, I don't, hello, I don't, hello, hello. Hey, Alex. 1035. Hey, hi, Kika. Brenda. How you doing? <laughs> I'm sorry. And hi, Anne. It's okay, you guys. I was just getting set up. I hope everyone's having a wonderful Wednesday. As I Good always morning. say, you guys are the it's crazy like them. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, thank you. Good morning, yes, it's Diane. Good morning. It's hot no. day. It's hot hello, day. everyone. <laughs> I, w- I was still sleeping, Alex, when you told me to tap on my video. Oh, uh, yes. No, you're good. Just making sure you can hear. So uh, as yeah, always, I, I like hear. to go over the rest of the week before we start, but it's always a pleasure to uh, present hey, this for you guys. Hey, as Alex, always. Thank you. Hey, Alex, can I ask you a question real quick? Yes, I got, yes, I got Bruno Mars picture. What's that song? I, p- I put it in the chat, Denise. Let's leave the door open. Oh, there you go. Leave the door open. I don't know. Couldn't I think of that? Yeah, thank you. No problem. Hey, we must really be getting tired brains uh, uh, (laughs) signed up. But uh, as always, I like to uh, go over the rest of the week for you guys, just so you guys are aware. So um, just make sure you guys are checking your emails. That's how you know how the class is going and um, what's going on for the rest of the week. I... Do you want to say, please, if you have any TVs on, please turn them off. Please put your cell phones on silent. Uh, we would really appreciate that. So everyone's able to hear um, and retain as much information as we can. So, um, yes, today is National Asparagus Day. So it says cook accordingly. <laughs> today, uh, I'll be covering apps for cooking. 
So there's uh, always a description for all of our classes below the title. Um, we have Crystal today for the lunch club. She'll be reading the same book as uh, last week. And this afternoon, we'll be covering buttons and accessibility features on your iPad with our regular module. Um, on Thursday, we have the lunch club with, um, it's gonna be with Teresa this week. And in the afternoon, we're gonna have Dr. Mundy, our nutritionist come and speak. And she's gonna be talking about the um, Start Simple with My Plate app. So um, she's covered it quite a few times. So it's gonna be a refresher and how you can use the app to assist you in developing your own personal food plan. Last but not least, the, on Friday morning, Teresa will be covering shopping online with gift certificates. In the afternoon, we'll be covering email on your iPad. So that's a big one for you guys. I recommend that you join that every time because you can always learn something new about sending emails. Of course, we have the library flyer. So you get to see um, all of our upcoming library trainings that are booked and confirmed. And just so you guys are aware, Monday is Memorial Day. So we will be off. All right. Um, this is a flyer from one of our seniors. Um, this is for a, uh, a Juneteenth event. So all the information can be found on here. Um, it's uh, not too far. Uh, it's literally on like East Capitol Street. So it's uh, very um, close and accessible through bus, through Metro. So just uh, join if you're able to. And as always, we have a highlight of the week. So it's still May. Can you believe it? <laughs> and it's still Mental Health Awareness Month. So um, I did a little write-up on Sigmund Freud, and you can read about how he advocated for mental health and, you know, just the context. You see his uh, year, it's 1856 to 1939. So we've um, definitely come a long way in, in uh, terms of um, mental health and just um, taking care of yourself. So um, you can read about what he contributed, and uh, it's just more information that you know, you guys um, can be aware of. Um, as always, we have the emails for all of the emails that you can email <laughs> for assistance regarding your attendance, your uh, midterm survey, library trainings, and if you just need general help, that help desk email is the way to go if you need assistance um, with something. So you can email them, or as always, you can call our help desk at the number that you see listed. Okay. So Alex. without further Alex. Yes, Ann. Um, the the um, um, help desk is so very good, and I just wanted to say that though all the of you that answer the phone and answer stuff, it's really really uh, an enlightening experience because uh, I couldn't get into uh, Zoom, and they helped me get in there this morning. And for some reason, I don't know why I was acting up, but. They talked me in. It took us a few minutes, but here I am. So I <laughs> oh, to say yes, thank it's... you to all you guys that work at the uh, Wild Tech, and uh, especially to you, honey, because you always introduce us to something. I, I got my granddaughter just flabbergasted. <laughs> oh, th thank you. That that really means a lot to me, and uh, it's a. Uh, I made a um... FaceTime phone call <laughs> on my own. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, again, it's it's always a pleasure, and it uh, means a lot that you guys are using your device and such. So um, I really appreciate that. It's just uh, more information. So um, thank you so much. So again, if you guys have any questions, there is quite a lot to cover today. So please um, either put your question in the chat so I can read it and uh, maybe able to answer it during. But please raise your hand. Um, hit more. Hit raise hand if you have a question, and I'll be answering them. Um, at the end. So I really appreciate that. Um, but today we'll be covering apps for cooking. So uh, it's super fun. That's a really long time passion of mine. So um, I found some apps that may be uh, useful to you guys. And certainly um, I did not um, know about two of these before um, creating this lesson for you guys. So let's uh, have a great time. <laughs> Uh, as always, I'm going to read the disclaimer to you guys. So Wild Tech DC Senior iPad program, its owners and presenters offer technical assistance, virtual health, well-being information designed for educational purposes only. You should not rely on the information in any applications or topics made by Wild Tech, including but not limited to mobile and device applications and any social media pages maintained by the Wild Tech DC Senior iPad program, its owners or presenters as a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, treatment, or legal advice. 
Thank you so much for letting me read that. If you cannot hear me or see me or see the videos that we're about to watch, please let me know. And you can unmute yourself for that. I'd really appreciate that. <laughs> um, but today uh, we're gonna be first learning how, how and why do we cook and a little bit of history. Um, of course, I'm gonna uh, showcase three apps to you guys. They're navigating it and giving you more information. Today we'll be covering three apps. One of them is Tasty. The second is Super Cook. And last but not least is a game called Hungry Hearts Diner. And of course, we'll be having an overview and a discussion. So if you guys have any questions and uh, we have some questions for you guys to answer, that's the time to ask them again. Um, I really appreciate you guys being on today. And um, just please make sure your name is showing on Zoom. So I see we have an 839 um, person on. So please hit participants, check to see if your name is showing. You guys know how to rename yourselves. All right. So first up, we're gonna go over how and why we cook. It's always good to have a little context about what uh, we'll be going over today. So the first video is, why do we cook? People around the world celebrate many different holidays for many different reasons. But no matter how we celebrate, most of us have one thing in common, and that's sitting down to a big holiday meal together. And we're not the only social animals that sit down to eat together, but we are the only ones who cook. Cultural anthropologist Claude Levi Strauss says that above all, cooking establishes the difference between animals and people, although I think he'd agree that pants make a big difference too. I think he was probably talking about the cultural attachments to cooking, the ceremonies, or the tools, but he was right in a completely different way. Cooking literally allowed us to become human in the most basic biological and evolutionary sense of the word. This theory is championed by people like Harvard's Richard Wrangham. And he says, above all else, cooking allowed us to transition from primitive ape to complex human. It allowed us to feed our growing brains and it opened up a lot of free time. The success of human culture and evolution is because of our remarkably advanced brain. It's a hundred billion neurons full of language and creativity and curiosity. But that brain comes at a cost. It uses one fifth of the calories that we eat. I guess with great power comes great hunger. We've got enormous brains in relation to our body size, and that's one of the key differences between us and our primate cousins. Take gorillas, for instance. They're three times as massive as humans, but their brains only have one third the number of neurons. Scientists actually estimate for a gorilla to have a brain the size of ours, they'd have to add 700 calories to their daily diet. The thing is, gorillas already spend 80% of their daylight hours eating. Their diet is mostly leaves and fruits, and all raw. Chimpanzees, too, spend more than half of their day eating, compared to us at just 5%. But most of that's probably waiting in line. <laughs> Gorillas and chimps share more in common with human ancestors like Australopithecus than they do with us. Compared to humans, gorillas' skulls have enormous jaws and huge teeth and these powerful ridges to attach chewing muscles, which are all adaptations to a diet that mainly consists of dense, fibrous plant matter. Ooh. We see a lot of those same traits in Australopithecus. But then something happened. Around 1.8 million years ago, brains and body sizes doubled mm. in the form of Homo erectus, the first modern human. While Australopithecus looks distinctly ape-like, if you saw Homo erectus walking down the street, you'd pretty much recognize it as human, except for the lack of pants again. But inside of Homo erectus's basically human skull is a basically human brain, which means that it had figured out a way to get a lot more energy out of its food. A part of that is thanks to hunting and eating large animals, but also to tools that allowed it to cut meat from large animal carcasses and break bones to get at their calorie-rich marrow. While Homo erectus probably ate meat when they could get it, we think they still ate mostly plants, and it's cooking that made the difference. When plants are cooked, it breaks down their tough cell walls, which lets them release more of their nutrients, and it makes them easier to chew. And not only that, but heat denatures or unwinds proteins, which allows our bodies to digest them easier, and it inactivates plant toxins. 
Now, this means that our ancestors could have gotten access to more foods and more energy than ever before. This works with animal and meat products too. You can see it every time you cook an egg as you go from clear to um, white. <laughs> There's a catch though. Scientists haven't found definitive proof that Homo erectus harnessed fire 1.8 million years ago, but that could be because things like burnt sticks don't fossilize very well, and well, fossils right. from that era are pretty rare to begin with. Cooking can mean a lot more than just putting your food over fire, though. Maybe it means crushing it up into a more edible form, or it could mean preserving it and breaking it down with salt. Mm. And maybe it means cutting it into pieces and drying it up in the sun or mashing it up into an edible form like this. And maybe you let nature do the work for you. <laughs> Fermentation, right? And because our ancestors were spending less time eating, that gave them a bunch of free time to do things like develop language or invent art and tools. Now chimps mostly eat food where they find it, and they'll gladly take food from another chimp. I drink your milkshake. But when our ancestors started cooking food, that means they'd bring it back to a central location. And that means they'd have to strengthen social bonds and cooperation. Maybe cooking helped us evolve to just get along. They would have had to invent new tools to carry their food around in. Our children would have lived longer because of better nutrition, and so would our adults. We ate our way to becoming a stronger species. When you sit down to your next holiday meal and your weird Uncle Larry starts talking about politics again, well, just remember that cooking together is a big part of what makes you human. And hey, at least you'll have something else to talk about. <laughs> Stay curious. If you'd like to know more about the evolution of human cooking, check out Richard Rang. Yes, I hope that was very interesting for you guys. And then uh, the next video I have, it, it really moved me a certain way because there is a lot of things that um, the presenter said that you know, really, again, just stuck with me and, you know, why, you know, I'm here today. And um, let's go ahead and, and watch this video. So the power of home cooking is so important. Meet so Grammarly Go, this ad, we'll get your go-to solution for getting quality work done quickly. <laughs> I have a passion for the power of home cooking. Yeah. In 1996, when Hillary Clinton published It Takes a Village to Raise a Child, I had three young boys at home, Calder 10, Miles 6, and Luca 2. And what I really thought at that time was, really, it takes a dinner table. Because it's the one place you can have an impact on the physical, spiritual, an emotional well-being of a human being. You may think you're too busy to cook dinner, and you don't have time to sit down and eat, but think of how much time you spend rabbit-holing on the internet, Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, Snapchat, <laughs> Snapchat stories. So why not consider home cooking an essential life skill, like brushing your teeth, or cleaning your body, or getting to work on time. Mm. Why not just decide it's important to you? And after years of cooking and sitting down at the table with your family tribe, you will be rewarded and thankful for what's happened there. And here's the thing, you can't go back and reclaim it. Inhabit it now. Find time to make home cooking work for you. So here's a few little tips that worked for me. Don't drive through. <laughs> for $8, no under eight ingredients, you can serve eight people flautas and guacamole at home. I remember the time one child came home and said to me, he had been at a friend's house after school, and he said, why can't we have Hot Pockets? <laughs> now, I knew those convenience items. They came two to a pack, and one boy could gobble two packs at a time, and they were preservative-laden and expensive. And so instead, I decided to use real ingredients and make a home version. And what it did was recognize that their utility is undeniable. So the boys could just pull them out and heat them up at their convenience. 
you can steal ideas from their friends. So one day, my son Luca, my most meat-eating son, went for a sleepover at his friend Nate's in a vegan household. So he came back the next day and he said, "Gosh, I sure wish you could cook like Nate's mom." <laughs> Pam, the vegan poet, I had never heard her cook or talk about it. So I called her up and I said, "Pam, what on earth did you feed Luca?" She said, "Oh my gosh, he loved it. It was just lentils that I cooked in water." <laughs> Luca hated lentils. So I concocted a lentil soup, and I served it with big, golden, crunchy croutons made from leftover bread. And to this day, that soup sits on our stove many winter weekends. It costs a dollar sixty for eight servings, and each serving has as much protein as a four-ounce chicken breast. Ooh. Luca says today that if a kid grows up. Being taught something day after day, it sticks with them whether they deem it important or not. Because when they grow up, it was a ritual to them, almost like a religion. And if the kid sees the parent cook and eat fresh vegetables every day, he told me recently it has such an effect that it not only balances your life but your lifestyle.、Mm. I wouldn't have known that when he was growing up, that he was taking that in. And don't hide the vegetables. Bring them out in all their glory,、yes. because if you build it, they will come, and if you make it taste good, they'll eat it and have some fun with it. Do what you can. My second son, Miles, at a five, as a five-year-old, hated onions, and onions are in everything. But one day, I noticed when we were going to Brooklyn, because he that was his favorite thing to do to go to Brooklyn and see his friend. So one night, I said, "You know, onions come from Brooklyn." <laughs> <laughs> And after that, he loved Brooklyn onions. Were these Brooklyn onions? Did you use the Brooklyn onions? <laughs> That's Miles. He's 24 years old today, and he's overcome many personal challenges. In fact, when he was just 16, his father and I emancipated him from high school to work in one of the most challenging, tough, but finest kitchens in the world. Now, he was there three years, and aside from becoming a badass fish cook, he learned math, science, French, and Spanish.、Mm. Miles has shared some things with me today that I could never have fathomed when he was young. He says that a kid, any kid who has occupational or any kind of attention or learning issues, they need structure as a young child, and food's really good for that. He says, "Give a kid corn to shuck, and that's an hour that kid is shucking corn and not going off and getting into trouble he shouldn't be getting into." He said, "You can involve even the smallest kid in the prep of food." Do you know he told me that when I gave him a potato peeler to peel potatoes, he said it was like a kind of therapy because、mm-hmm. by peeling the potato and feeling the texture of that potato, it calmed him down. I didn't know that when I needed help in the kitchen at the time. <laughs> Our third-born son, sorry, first-born son Calder.、Um, after he spent a year in a freshman dormitory, waking up with a stomachache many mornings amidst a wasteland of cardboard boxes from takeout food and greasy napkins, he decided that feeding himself was as important as going out to party and hang out. Okay, maybe almost as important. So the first thing I did was I taught him how to make. Chicken wings and potato skins, and then the calls started coming home. How do you make your roast chicken? So if I got too long-winded when I was talking to him, he'd say, "No, not the recipe. How do you do it? How do you make the skin so crispy?" I would speak as quickly and simply as I could so he wouldn't hang up the phone. <laughs> and the calls kept coming. How do you make pork chops with apples and onions? How do you make A fried egg, so it isn't gooey on top. Well, when the egg is frying in the butter, you take a little bit of water and hit the hit the fat. It starts to steam, and then just put the top on for about twenty or thirty seconds, and the top will cook at the same rate as the yes, bottom. Yes, that is such a good tip. There's one simple hearing hack anyone can use to improve their hearing almost、ads. overnight. <laughs> 
Calder says that when he smells garlic cooking in oil or butter, he thinks of home. But when he smells garlic burning in oil or butter, he thinks, to use his words, how I was always harping, don't burn the garlic. <laughs> one by one, these recollections are strung together like pearls on a priceless necklace. We all have them. And if yours are unwelcome memories, why not cook new ones? Smell is the most transporting of senses. In one whiff can trigger what it felt like to be in your childhood kitchen. Mm, we all have the triggers. Think about it for one second. What's that one thing when you smell, you think of home? Well, Marcel Proust had his Madeleines, but I have Faico's Pork Store on Bleecker Street in Greenwich Village, New York City. I take one step inside and I am overcome by the heady aroma of pecorino, parmesan, and provolone cheese, pork, garlic, and tomato sauce. And in a whiff, in a single inhale, I am transported to my Italian grandmother's kitchen, where she and her sisters, my great aunts, were bustling around in floral printed house dresses, laughing and chatting and hand gesturing and bickering about the best way to make meatballs. One side thought you had to brown them before you dumped them into the sauce. But the other side said, oh, no, no, you don't need to brown them. You just dump them right in the sauce to cook. And those meatballs would bubble away on the stove in a sauce called Sunday gravy. And that Sunday gravy was the very first thing I learned how to cook. And thank goodness I did, because it was like amber encasing happiness from my childhood. In 1943, MFK Fischer wrote, our three common needs for food, security, and love are so mixed and mingled and entwined that we can hardly think straight of one without the other. Mm. So I offer you one of the most inspiring ideas that you can inhabit right now. Cook for the people you love, but teach them to cook for themselves and they will pass it on. Thank you. So many ideas. Don't just, it, it, you know, it just definitely moved me in a certain way. So I hope uh, that video was enlightening to um, some of you guys. And uh, I um, see like, Alex, you was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> But essentially she said, don't drive through you know, use ideas from your friends, don't hide the vegetables, and then the eggs and the garlic. Stir. I mean, hey, that's just, you know, food, security, love. That's it. That's all you need in life, food, security, and love, right? So um, I, if, if you want to say anything about the video, please wait until the end. I really appreciate it. Um, but before we go into our apps for today, um, these are some of the meals that I've prepared myself. So um, I've made uh, with my friends, some of these with my friends, but I um, helped prepare them. I made it Shrimp curry with uh, rice and butter beans. So good. <laughs> this is a full on steak with uh, mashed potatoes and parsnips and carrots right here. And then this is a piece of lamb with uh, hearts of palm puree and uh, mixed vegetables and chickpea salad. So literally don't mm -hmm. hide the vegetables mm -hmm. is right here. Like there's, a there, got, there has to be vegetables. It's so important to, um, get all the nutrients from it. So, you know, I, I have a passion for cooking myself and I'm, you know, blessed that I'm able to do that um, on my own. And, you know, I've learned throughout the years. So, um, so yeah, it's, I, I really have a passion for, for cooking. So um, without further ado, we're gonna uh, go ahead and start um, our apps for today. So um, again, we're gonna be covering an app called Tasty, Super Cook, in a game called Hungry Hearts Diner. So Tasty is uh, where you can see recipes and cooking videos. Meet your new cooking coach. Over 4,000 recipes are available at your fingertips. Uh, with Tasty, you can get step-by-step -step instructions for every recipe. You can watch videos and recommendations for your next meal. And you can also search for recipes based on ingredients you already have and more. Note, you must create a Tasty account to access the app, which is very simple. So um, I'll, I will be showing that in just a couple of seconds on how to make that account, but it's very easy. 
um, in the Tasty app, this is what your home screen will look like. Um, of course, there is a search bar at the top where you can explore recipes by the filter that they provide, by an ingredient, by a type of cuisine, et cetera. Um, and, and at the bottom is going to be your navigation bar where the discover button shows you popular and recommended recipes, guides, and more. So basically your home screen. Um, again, when you first open the app, um, you have a community button, so you can actually view, like, and comment on um, pe uh, people's posts uh, of the recipes that they've been making. Um, there is a My List and a My Bag button, so you can actually view requested ingredients from recipes and add them to a Walmart cart. So Tasty and Walmart have a partnership um, where you can add them to your Walmart cart and able to actually purchase them uh, from the Walmart mm -hmm. website. Mm -hmm. um, last but not least is the profile um, button. So you can, in your profile, you can view your saved recipes. You can view uh, the cook, your, uh, your own cookbooks that um, you can create and uh, your account activity and certain settings um, in the app. So let's go ahead and explore the Tasty app. So again, you go to the app store and, and you go to the search um, button and you search for tasty pretty easy right you get tasty it's right here the very first one it's a colorful app it's from buzzfeed very popular and uh, you download it and you, then you can open it so once you open it you will get to this screen where um it says hey get started and we're going to go ahead and get started it's going to ask you a couple questions. So this says, are you a vegetarian? And for me, no. Show me all the recipes. So you just pick the option that best fits you. Um, it says, choose at least three recipes that you like. So for me, I like, let's see what options they got. I love pad thai. I love um, these pork chops right here. They look good. And this garlic parmesan pasta. That's my cup mm. of tea. So those are three recipes that I like. Next up, what's most important to you when cooking? So you choose whatever tea you'd like. So um, for me, um, I like uh, easy recipes and I definitely want healthy options. So those are the two that I, uh, that I chose. Last but not least, it says personalize your experience by creating an account. At the bottom, it says sign up. So you tap on that and then you can sign up um, through, through the methods that it says. So for me, um, I already um, have an account. I wish I could show you guys the specifics, but it's very easy um, to sign up for an account. So look, here is the search bar at the top. So you can again search by recipe, but look, if you scroll down, you see there are different filters. So if you want breakfast, you hit breakfast. If you want um, uh, party food, you hit party. Um, cuisine, you can choose the type of cuisine that you like. You can also um, find recipes based on what you already have at home. So that's a little bit like the, app, the next app we're going to go over, um, but it's also in this app as well. So you can enter up the three ingredients. So for me, I know I have some, um, some chicken thighs in my freezer. Um, I know that I have, let's see. Hmm, what else do I have? I have uh, tomatoes. And then I have some pasta. So I, you can type those in and then you hit find recipes and look, here are four recipes you can make that all involve chicken, tomatoes, and pasta. Pretty cool, right? <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. So that is this. That is the search bar. Um, the discover button. Again, look. Here is what's recommended for you. Um, so, so based on that quiz we just did, um, you can look at which ones they recommend. What uh, the community is really loving. So, look, this looks really good. Lasagna roll-ups. Oh my god. <laughs> um, what the community is cooking. So you can see pictures of um, people's meals that they've um, uploaded. Recommended for you, trending, popular meals to freeze for the week if you want to meal prep, side dishes. Look at all this stuff. <laughs> there are videos, recent stuff. So it's a lot. 
that is available to you. The community button is of course, um, look, welcome to the Tasty community. Find recipes, tips, and photos from others on Tasty. Look, a microwave chocolate chip cookie. <laughs> Uh, one pot lemon garlic shrimp pasta. Again, all these pictures. Look, macarons. Love me some macarons. <laughs> Pineapple sweet and sour chicken. So these are literally from different people posting a recipe and tips. And you can like them, you can comment on them. You can actually save the recipe too. So let's say I wanted, hey, look, strawberry shortcake sheet pan pancakes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Let me save that for later. So. Let me hit save recipe, and then it will appear in the profile section, which again, we're going to go over in a second. But look, it says you saved your first recipe. Find saved recipes, organized cookbooks, and more in your profile tab. So that's great. Um, next up is the My List and the My Bag option. So for My List, it says add recipes and we'll organize your shopping list for you. So if I wanted to make, um, let's see, this one pan, garlic butter salmon. Look, they actually they have a video. And look, once you scroll down and look at the recipe, it says add ingredients to my bag. And it estimates the cost because Walmart, it depends on what Walmart, you know, if in DC is probably going to be the same. But if you're in different areas, you know, the prices are a little different. So if I hit add ingredients to my bag, Look, it says select a Walmart store. We'll use your location to find local Walmart stores offering grocery pickup and delivery. It says you can either enable services or enter your zip code. So it um, doesn't really matter which one you choose. Let me go ahead and put in a DC zip code. And then look, the closest one is Riggs Road. I knew that already. <laughs> I love that Walmart. It's, uh, really, it's really big. Um, so you can tap on it and look, it says your store has been saved. Um, so let me try again, add ingredients to my bag. And look, they tell you what's available, which is cool. And it tells you which ones are out of stock on the right hand side. It also gives you the pantry ingredients, etc. So it says the estimated total is about $14.85. You hit add ingredients to my bag. And look, five items added for $14.85. But um, in general, this is what a recipe looks like. It gives you the amounts. You can actually change the um, ingredients for how many servings. Let's say I just wanted one serving. You can change it so that way it's only one serving. Um, it gives you the nutrition info. It gives you tips, related recipes, uh, preparation. So this is the actual recipe. Preheat it's oven. Me. It's it's very, very easy. And then if you do step-by-step -step mode, Excuse look at this. You can go through all of the- in, um, I apologize. You can, you can go through all of the steps in, uh, in, one, in, uh, in each step. They actually give you a moving image, which is called a GIF, in order to um, actually complete the recipe. You just keep tapping. Look at that, isn't that cool? You get a yeah. visual mm -hmm. and you get text at the same time. Yeah. Mm. So you just keep That's going. Good through. too. Bake 18 minutes. You just keep going, serve and garnish with parsley. And it actually shows you the final result, which mm. is mm, super cool. Mm. So mm. Actually, look, inside of this, look, and, and the quality of the video is just, it's just great. So um, that <laughs> is what you can do in a recipe. Of course, there are these buttons at the top right where you can actually share the recipe again through mail, through, um, you can copy the link, you can pull it up in Safari. Um, you can like, you can add it to your shopping list by hitting the second button and you can also save the recipe as well by hitting the heart button at the top right. So very easy. Um, the bag option, of course, look, this is what's in your Walmart bag. And then um, you can actually check out at Walmart by hitting um, this, this button. So once you get your ingredient list, you can hit that button and it tells you as a reminder, this item is out of the stock pool. I, I ha actually have some frozen salmon in my freezer. So <laughs> oh, that's good with me. But look, it says continue to Walmart. It says you're leaving Tasty to go to Walmart. And look, it sends you directly to the Walmart website. Mm. Look at that, everything. 
already in there for your car. You don't have to search for it. It's it's already in here. It tells you your subtotal. And um, I, I, I'm not sure if, um, if all, you know, if to, I've never done a Walmart order before, but I'm um, assuming you can use, you know, your Visa, your credit, debit, um, maybe Snap. I'm not sure, probably because Walmart takes Snap. Um, other vouchers and such, I'm not sure, but just try it out and see if it works. But essentially, it's a, it's much, a very good time saver um, to, you know, go um, actually get all these items for you in the cart for Walmart. Um, <laughs> So look, even when you go back to the app, did you complete your purchase? Um, no, I didn't. So I wanna keep the items in my bag in case I wanna access it later. Um, last but not least is the profile um, section where look, there are, you can see all of your saved recipes. You can add them to your own cookbooks. So they have some already in here, like snacks, side, lunch, drinks, et cetera. And you can also create your own cookbook as well by hitting create new cookbook. Um, in the activity section, um, look, it says your ratings, your tips, recently viewed, um, recently purchased, et cetera. And last but not least, if you look at the top right, you should see the settings um, icon. So you can adjust different settings like autoplay, like if you want to switch to vegetarian, the measurement system. So if you want metric and US, or if you just want US only, um, you can change your preferred grocery store, uh, et cetera. So that is the Tasty app where it's a, there's just a lot to explore. <laughs> um, next up, again, just, um, just being mindful of the time. Um, yes, Yvonne, I'm, I'm not sure how it works online. I've never shopped for food online with Walmart. So um, just check it out, but I'm pretty sure they take um, all different methods. Um, our next app is called Supercook Recipes by Ingredients. So if you, how many times have you opened the fridge and thought to yourself, what can I make with what I have? Supercook to the rescue. This app only shows you recipes that require ingredients you already have. With Supercook, you can build a virtual pantry with the ingredients you have at home, get creative in the kitchen with over 11 million recipes. And the best thing is you can reduce food waste. I make sure that everything that I put in this house is either you know eaten or given away. I hate wasting food myself because there's a a lot of folks that aren't able to, you know, get it um, for their home. So, you know, you want to be mindful of That's yourself good. and and everybody else. So this, you know, also really resonated with me. Reduce food waste. Note, you mm -hmm. must create a super quick account to save recipes. So you don't need an account, but if you want to save certain recipes, again, it's very simple to make an account. When you open the app, um, this is, again, what it looks like. So very similar to Tasty. There's a search bar at the top. So it's different for each tab at the bottom that you go to. So it's just important that you read the description in the bar. Second is the pantry button. So the first bu button at the bottom, you can add ingredients that are in your kitchen to view more recipes. Um, there's a menu button where you can view uh, recipes and videos on meals you are able to create. Um, the next one is the favorites button. Um, you can see saved recipes. Um, that you save. And last but not least, again, is that shopping list button. So you can make a shopping list. It's not like the tasty one where it does it for Walmart. It's just you literally type in a list. So you may use the reminders app for it, but you can also um, make an actual shopping list within this app. So this is called the Super Cook app. Again, you go to the app store, you hit the search button, and in the search bar, you search for Super you hit search and it's right there at the top right. It looks like a green spoon with the red cape. <laughs> Super cute, right? Mm -hmm. And, you, <laughs> and yeah. uh, you can then download and open it. So once you open the app, you see uh, you choose what language and then you hit get started. Once you hit get started, look, you can also use your voice to um, add ingredients, but look, it says the only ingredients we assume you have are salt, pepper, and water. You can choose what's in your pantry and you can tap to view um, all of the different ingredients. Um, by the way, at the top right, if you see A to Z, this, you know, it's great, but I'd rather look at, my, at the ingredients by, um, by name. So look, B, C, D, et cetera. So look, 
I have baking powder, soda, basil, um, brown sugar, butter, carrots, uh, chicken breast. I have a, a lot of this stuff. So you, it's same thing for you. Whatever you have in your pantry, you can then add it to um, your list. Onion, oregano, parsley, uh, rice, soy sauce, spaghetti, sugar, tomato, vegetable oil. So whatever you have, vegetables and greens, you can do as many as you like. Um, so look, I need to find, let's see, I already put tomatoes in dry, I have corn, um, looking for peas, I don't see it, mixed vegetables I have, um, let's see, there's, you see there's so many options, cucumbers, and look, even corn husk, you can make stuff with the husk of the corn, um, celery, broccoli, um, avocado, I love me some avocado, uh, arugula. And you keep going, like mushrooms, like what mushrooms you have, what type of fruits you have, um, apple, banana. Um, I know I have orange, so let me look for orange. It's right here. And you just keep going and going and going. And you can, um, it's, it's pretty therapeutic as, a, <laughs> as the um, woman said in the video to um, just go through and you can know what you have just by looking at this list. Um, nuts and seeds, I have almonds. Um, I know I have peanuts, um, pistachios, mixed seeds, mixed nuts. Um, I know I have American cheese. So you can keep going and keep going. You see there's a lot of different options. You can also, again, use your voice by tapping on this uh, microphone button and you can add your ingredients based on your voice. So um, that's pretty cool, right? So now it says my pantry 43. And then look, it says see recipes. So once you add your ingredients, you hit see recipes and look, building your menu. You can make 8,083 recipes with your 43 ingredients. So this is the menu section now and they divide it. And you can also filter it based on meal type if you're just missing one ingredient, um, cuisines, max ingredients, recipe time, you can adjust it by that. But look, using your chicken breast, Asian, using your almond appetizers and snacks using your mixed nuts let's say uh let's do oven oven free like if you don't want to use your oven it's getting hot it's the summer who wants to be you know burning up in their in their place right so if you want an oven free recipe you can look at these so look perfect pancakes i tap on that and look you have um all the ingredients that you need and it shows you the check mark on the side if you have them or not, you can view all the nutrition facts, which is important. So you can see what um, you know, you're actually intaking. Um, other recipes you may like. Mm, and there's, mm. there's a lot. And then you can, so they, they source these it's recipes great. from di from different websites. So look, it says view full recipe. Once I tap that, look, how to make perfect pancakes. It sends you straight to the website of that recipe. And and look, um, you can then see the ingredients and then look at the instructions and just read through them. Um, there are notes, again, the nutrition facts, and it's cool. You might find a website that you may have never heard before, and then you can go on Safari and just look up that website yourself. So bare feet in the kitchen. I don't, I've never heard of that until today. So go ahead and you know, explore based on the recipes. If you hit these three dots at the top right, you can then um, either open the recipe in the browser, record a problem if you need to. And then you can also save recipes by hitting the, um, the save button. So I don't have an account. If you would like to save recipes, you can easily make an account. Um, for time's sake, I'm not gonna do that right now, but again, it's very easy to do that. Um, the favorites button at the bottom, of course, you, know, you can save your recipes, um, sign up for free, very easy. Um, to make an account. And last but not least is the shopping list button. Once you tap on it, look, your shopping list is empty. Let me add cheese, return. Let me add milk, return. Eggs, return. Look, you can literally make a shopping list in this app. And then once you get it, you can mark it as complete. It strikes through the ingredient and it moves it down to the what I got list. Um, if you hit the three dots at the top right, you can then clear the completed. So if you do this several times and you don't wanna see those anymore, you can hit clear, complete it, and look, your shopping list is back empty. So every time you go to the grocery store, once you get what you need, 
you can get rid of the things that you got um, that you got keep the ones that you um, that you haven't received or if you got everything in your trip you can then clear the whole list out and start fresh next time so that is the super cook app very very easy to navigate and you can always add or remove as many ingredients as you'd like okay last but not least for today um, we're going to be covering a game called hungry hearts diner a tale of star crossed souls um, hungry hearts diner is a game about a small shop at the edge of a big city take on the role of a hard-working senior woman struggling to manage her family's little restaurant and all by her lonesome cook tasty meals for a variety of characters, learn more about their triumphs and struggles as they chow down on your home cooked food. So um, you, there's a, a story to this um, game. So, and you also get to learn about um, cuisine um, and, and things of that nature. Um, when you get in the app, um, it is a game. So of course they have a little tutorial in the beginning, but once you complete that little tutorial, this is what your home screen um, will look like. And this is actually the game itself as well. So at the bottom, um, there are different buttons that you can um, access. Food is where you're going to view and make different dishes for the customers that come into the restaurant. Second one is the upgrades button. You can purchase equipment for your diner with in-game currency that you earn by playing the game. Um, so like tables, desks, etc. There's a customer's button. You can explore customer stories and favorite foods. Everyone has a little background on it. So it's, just, it's very in-depth and, and really cool. Um, next up is the shop button. So you can purchase in-game, hmm, I don't know why I wrote foods, my apologies, in-game um, uh, upgrades, in-game upgrades with uh, real money. So um, I know one of them is like $3 so the other ones are like a dollar. Um, the options are listed, but again, you can pretty much do anything for um, free. It's just about playing the game itself. So, you know, I, I, uh, if you want to, great. If not, that's okay too. And last but not least is the options button. You can change settings like the background music, um, the sound, and the notifications that you receive. So let's go right on in. Um, same thing as before. You go to the app store. You search for the app that you would like. So in this case, this is Hungry Hearts. Diner. And once you type that in, it's at the very top right. They actually have a second game and actually a third game as well. So um, there's actually an end to each of them. It's a story based game. So um, explore that if you'd like. But once you hit Hungry Hearts Diner, it's really it's so cute, the little icon. But <laughs> once you um, open the app, this is what it will look like. So yeah, I want to allow notifications. This is also a time-based game as well. So uh, it says this ad is the application is supported by ad revenue. You can enable tracking or not, it's up to you. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit allow. And this is what the game starts off looking like. Hungry Hearts Diner, a tale of star cross souls. Touch to start. Tiny side street in the nameless little neighborhood sits in an old Japanese diner. Things are quiet here, old fashioned you might say, but of course they are. It's a Showa era Japan, and the television is just starting home in Tuba. Slide open the screen door, and you'll see a kindly old lady hard at work behind the counter. Her husband's been sick for a while, and she's had to run the place on her own. It's hard work, she's a tough one, and she gets by. Sit down on one of the worn wooden tables and close your eyes. Thunk thunk goes the steady beat of a knife chopping veggies. Hits the sound of meat sizzling in a pan. Swish swish the whisk beating eggs. The soothing sounds of a simple kitchen. Sit here long enough and all that tension will just flow right out of you. So come on on in. Order a hot meal and take a load off. Peace will do you good. So you cook serve any profit, serve your customers tasty home cooked meals, then collect the bill. You pick a dish, you practice, and if you cook it enough, you can level up your food by cooking it enough times and unlock new dishes as well. Um, this, there, the, each character's satisfaction goes up, there's new events, so again it's a story-based game, and uh, you can 
unlock new events by raising your customer satisfaction, you can save money, and buy upgrades for your diner. And it says, we hope you enjoy the stories waiting for you here in Hungry Hearts Diner. So look at that. That's what the restaurant used to look like. Or will look like, hopefully. <laughs> Welcome to Grandma's Diner. She's just started running it, and boy, is it a lot of work. So again, I'm gonna... Yep, new customer, the salary man. So look, oh look, a customer, let's make them some food. So you hit the food button. And the first thing is, it looks like, um, um, a rice ball. So look, how about a nice rice ball? You hit make, and make some food requires money and energy. So at the top, you should see a heart meter and um, and the money meter as well. So let's go ahead and hit make. You see her, she's making the meal right there. So adorable. And then look, food you make goes onto the sideboard until it's served. So as you can see, the person that's here, they want a rice ball. So you just tap on that icon to serve them their food. You can tap a customer to hurry them along. Be faster, please. <laughs> That's just so normal. So if I tap on them, you see they sweat a little bit. And then, look, if it's time to collect the bill, tap to get paid. You can tap on uh, an item on the sideboard to make it again. Try making more rice balls. So if I just single tap, look, food can level up. Sometimes they, this will unlock a new dish. So if I hit meat again, you see she's making it, that's about it. And just in time because we've got some customers on the way. And look, now I leveled up the dish and now I got some new dishes available. Which is so cool. Um, again, at the bottom, the food button. You can view all the different dishes you're able to make and actually adjust them based on the different types, and you get to see what's already on the counter. Um, upgrades, you can purchase upgrades um, based on different conditions. So this sideboard, you need a level two diner. On the top right, we're still at level one, as you can see, and you need 2,500 coins to um, get it. So for right now, we're just making, uh, we're just making food for these folks. Um, next up is the customers button. You can view um, all the customers and their stories. So look, grandma and grandpa, you. Look, it says happily married for decades and the proud owners of the diner. Once you play the game more, more stories will unlock. The salary man, like diligent workers from the local local mega port. And look, there are many different folks, and you can read a little bit about their stories. Um, the shop button, of course, if you would like to purchase um, decorations um, and different boosts. Uh, even though it says zero dollars, it's a uh, 99 cent, but you know, just just play the game, and uh, you'll be able to um, get everything that you like. Last but not least is the options button. So if I want to turn off the background music, I just tap on that. And um, if you want a refresher on how to play the game, you can hit the view button for help, and it shows you that um, that menu we've seen before. So look, um, there's um, we're just waiting for a customer. There you go, look, new customer. Her name is Pigtails. <laughs> and then uh, you can then see what she would like um, for a dish. So we already have some rice balls made. So you can tap on her. And look, you can tap on her again to just rush her a little bit <laughs> to um, finish her meal. Look, another new customer, the blue collar. I can tap on, on coin to finish the meal and look she has these three dots that means there's a conversation or an event that can happen thank you for the meal grandma says oh it was nothing special hold on you hardly touched your food did you not like it oh i guess young ladies these days just don't appreciate a good old-fashioned meal <laughs> it's not bad i'm just it's just i'm sorry I'm, I'm just full is that right well i guess my portions are quite generous <laughs> Oh, don't worry about it, but you really should be eating more. Don't you want to grow up to be a healthy, beautiful lady like me? <laughs> oh my gosh, she didn't say anything. Well, <laughs> no, I don't. Mm. 
That is that is hilarious. <laughs> Who cares about being pretty? Mm. Really? I was just joking with you. Thank you for the meal. You're welcome. Come again. Sure. What is the matter with that young lady? <laughs> and that's the conversation. So look, the other person, they also wanted a rice ball. This, uh, the businessman again, he also wanted that. And we already have those two make. So while you're doing that, you gotta be preparing meals um, in case other people show up. So I wanna make a nori, dried seaweed. That's all it is. So why is it so tasty? Nothing beats a bit of nori paired with rice or egg. So they also, you also learn literally about Japanese cuisine. This is a raw egg. In, ja in Japan, raw egg is often eaten over rice. All you need is a bowl, some soy sauce, an egg, and you're good to go. I don't recommend that really, <laughs> but you know, different cultures and different places of the world, they do things a little differently. So um, it's up to you, but look. Raw egg, let's make a raw egg. You see these two folks, they want, each of them wants a nori. I tap on each one and look. If I go back to the customers tab, you see, look, pigtails. If I tap on her, this, this school girl's perpetual scowl scares away her many admirers. Careful, she might bite. <laughs> and you get to see her favorite foods too. Her favorite foods are fried egg, rolled omelet, rice omelet. And she often comes on the day because look at the top left, it tells you what day it is. So she, it says she often comes on Monday. So today's Monday, so she's likely to appear. Um, look, blue collar, um, hardworking factory men with big appetites. You can keep going through the list and learn more about each customer, which I think is pretty great. So look, Mr. Jizo, a new customer. Those are done. Because you see, there's only so many seats, so you might need to rush them um, in case uh, you don't have any seats left. You see, he wants a raw egg. Let's give him a raw egg. And while that's happening, um, if you see at the top left, that's a camera icon. If you tap on that camera icon, you can actually save the screenshot of what you're doing. So look, share. And then look, you can save the image, you can mail it which I think is pretty cool. So yes, I like to add this to my photos So make sure you hit okay. And look, these two folks are done. And look, another conversation appears. I said, well, hello, I've never seen a monk in here before. He nods, what a rare treat is it to have a holy man like you? Nod, think nothing of it. I was simply curious about this place, that is all. Oh, curious about what in particular? Do not dwell on it. <laughs> you are still not ready. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> However, I find myself very much enjoying the cuisine of this temporal world. Oh, uh, thank you for the kind words. Are monks allowed to eat this kind of food? <laughs> Good matron. Did you just call me matron? Does something trouble you? Beg your pardon? Well, actually, there is something. Let me hazard a guess. Unexpectedly forced to take charge of the diner, you find that you have too much on your plate. <laughs> What, what, how did you, Buddha knows all. Ah, yes, of course, how silly of me. We're in Japan, so that's why we mentioned Buddha. Wait. Go forth and cook, huh? Food, don your apron and set forth on a journey of culinary discovery. Oh, okay. You may be full of doubts. However, now is the time for patience. Focus on your entire being into crafting and serving food to your customers. Oh. Make rice balls and nori, what have you, again and again. Attain a higher level, huh? Then the path shall open to you. Oh, I see. Thank you, Mr. Monk. And he nods. Well, then I shall return. Well, thank you very much for the, for the advice. He's gone. What a mysterious person. <laughs> he had such an aura of dignity and wisdom. I got the strangest urge to pray to him just now. So I should practice making rice balls and nori, huh? I see. Hold on. Odd, I feel like I've seen that monk somewhere before. So you get the general gist of the game. It's, it's really cool. And, uh, you know, you, you just learn something new. So I hope uh, you guys explore it. There are ads occasionally. So you just have to get through the ad and, um, and continue playing the game. But they're very infrequent. So uh, that's what I really like. So that is the Hungry Hearts Diner game. Oops. So again, thank you so much um, for 
attending today's class. Um, if, uh, and now we're gonna have an overview and a discussion um, of uh, the, all the apps we're going over today. How can these apps improve our daily lives? So um, I have some questions for you. If you guys would like to answer, I'd really appreciate it if you could, um, at least one of them. So one is what is one new fact that you learned today? Which apps are you interested in trying out? What is your favorite type of cuisine or dish? And how has cooking positively impacted your life? So of course, I'll go based on the, um, the hands. And we have about 20 minutes or so for uh, me to answer questions. So uh, um, again, thank you so much for uh, attending today. We have the lunch club in about 20 minutes as well. And we have module two um, <laughs> um, at, in the afternoon. I just read your comment, Yvonne. So I'll, I'll answer Yvonne really quick. Um, Supercook does keep the pantry items. So you just have to physically remove them and add them. Um, as you so choose, but yes, this was uh, so fun. <laughs> um, but yes, hi Brenda, how are you? I'm good, Alex. Alex, um, now I like that super super cook because you can add all the items you have, and then it'll recommend a dish. Mm -hmm. So you know, I, I I really like that. And then another thing, the the young lady, uh, I think her name was Lucinda. Now. I, I really embrace cooking for my family because we do it every Wednesday. Mm -hmm. My son calls to see what we want to have for dinner. He'll buy it or either I'll buy it and I prepare it and we sit around and watch our favorite programs and just talk and and I don't hide the vegetables. My, yes, <laughs> my yes, grandchildren. Yes. I make they love vegetables, especially my granddaughter. She's five and she loves her her green beans, she calls them greens, but green beans, but they're green. <laughs> she loves them. So oh, wow. I, 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 we do this every Wednesday and I look forward to it. I enjoy cooking for my family because I mean, I, it, it's good for me. It's good. How can I say good therapy for me because yes. they're coming around. They're seeing me. <laughs> Actually, them people come over mostly every day. So <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I really enjoy cooking for my family and, and really enjoyed that. We're going to have a fabulous meal today. Let me tell you what we're having. We're having barbecue oxtails, potato mm. salad, uh -huh. string beans, macaroni and cheese. And my son that doesn't eat the oxtail, I'm baking a ranch chicken for him. So that's what we're having today. And they usually oh. take, take all of it with them. <laughs> take it with them. <laughs> Oh my God. Oh my God. Yes. 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 I, I'll be over, Brenda. I'm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not that far from you. I can come over. <laughs> yes. Yes. Hi, yes. Brenda. Brenda, I, yes. what time? About oh, seven. Wow. <laughs> oh, Brenda, a little earlier for me. Brenda, where do you buy your oxtail? Um, I found them at, he gets them at Costco. Oh, they have, wow. they yes, have like the double pack great. of oxtails and it yes, at Costco. Yes. Yeah. Great. And yeah, so that, <laughs> that's what we're having. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, Brenda. Uh, cooking is definitely therapeutic. You know, it always feels it good is. when you're able to do something on your own. And, you know, you're able, you know, in this case, use the app to be able to oh, you know, like think of the recipe. Um, yeah. You're able, you know, it's just good doing things for yourself but also again for your family so exactly you know, I, I, I really resonate with that. I really appreciate that you enjoyed the video because you know it definitely made me um just just appreciate the fact that I'm able to cook for myself and uh, yes that, you, you know you're able to you know share that with others if you so choose to so thank you yes. so much Brenda sure <laughs> I hope you enjoy um thank you <clears throat> yes uh so um next up uh is Diane hi Diane go ahead and unmute Hi, Alex. I enjoyed this video so much. But one thing I wanted to ask, does it allow you to cook for one or two people? What I'm asking is when you buy the food, because it's only me here in my age. So, and, and I haven't cooked in nine years. So <laughs> that's what I'm asking. Does the food allow you to cook 
get enough for just the two. Because I, you know, I, and I threw all of my ingredients away. So I'm starting from scratch when I pick a menu. Um, so you're talking about the Tasty app, correct? When you're able to shop yes, in Walmart? Yes, in Tasty apps. Yes. Yeah, so um, um, that's a good question. So if you're by yourself, I mean, when I when I when I look at the Walmart part, if if I were you, I would just look at the different item because if it's like a seasoning, I mean, it just comes like in a seasoning, right? But if it's like you know a pack of meat, then um, I you know what I would do is I would just search for that same item on the on the Walmart, you know, the website, and then see if there's a lower serving size in particular. Um, but it just depends on the recipe because each recipe requires a different amount of things, even though it may be the same item. So right. um, it just it depends on the recipe that you get those ingredients from. Because uh, if you want the ingredients for that one recipe, you just hit that button where you're able to then add it all to your cart. So for that recipe in specific, so I, if if I were you, I would look I would look to see if the recipe just one survey. If it has two, you know, um, for me, if it was one, great. If it's two, cool. I get to make one now and then I get to save one for later. But for well. later, yes, yes. And I, I just like this tasty app. Oh, and another thing, is there a, is there a charge when we um use that app? Um, no, it it uh it takes you directly to the Walmart app. So it that so that's why Tasty and Walmart have a partnership. So it's like you're literally buying from Walmart, but Tasty just allows you to add those ingredients to the Walmart card. Okay, just to yes, pick up a button, I, do, so. I, I do shop at Walmart. Thank you very much. That's all I wanted to know. Thank you. Oh, no problem. They, uh, as uh, if you saw, they do pickup and they do delivery as well. So it's uh, very convenient. Right. Thank you. No problem, Diane. I hope you enjoyed. You have a wonderful day. Yes. Um, next up is Anne. Hi, Anne. How are you? Hi, uh, Alex. Um, I wanted to answer one of your questions, and I wanted to mm -hmm. ask you a question. Okay. Uh, first, uh, how has co cooking positively impacted your life? Well, I started early watching my Nana Dennis, and uh, I learned mm -hmm. how to cook. And from that, I learned how to teach my mother, who who didn't have to cook because uh, when she was in school, because her mother and father cooked. So my son learned how to cook for me. And it also enabled me to um, uh, open my catering business. And it also has influenced yeah. me to have my cake business. So um, that was one thing. And, it, and it's always good to teach a man how to cook in case you don't get a wife. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I also wanted to know if you save the um the recipes on on the um on your app. Does that take up a lot of your um storage? No, and again, um, just the big if it, if the most things that are taking up storage that would take up storage on your device is big apps. So apps that are over like a gig in size, a gigabyte in size, or if you have tons and tons of long videos and a very large amount of photos. But other than that, no, it doesn't take up space at all. It's it's just a it's basically a text file. So text files are really small in size. So you don't have to worry about none of that. I would just worry about, you know, using the app and taking advantage of all of those things that are available to you. Okay. Now on your tasty app, there were two of them. One was on the left and one was on the right. Is it the one on the right? No, it's the I one, it's it, it's blue. It has an orange at the bottom left, it has strawberry at the top at the top left it's it's uh it's that one so okay. again if you if i, think, I, type I think in, that's the one i installed but i'll go back and make sure yeah it's the, it's the one on the left so it says tasty recipes and cooking videos it says editor's choice right underneath the name so it's the one that's the most popular okay okay all right i'm, mm -hmm. I'm looking at that yeah okay all right yeah so thank you, you. you got it no problem i hope you enjoyed today and Yes, I did very much. I like cooking, and uh, I'm teaching my aides how to cook American food, and they <laughs> they seem to be enjoying it. Especially the lady that's with me on the weekend; she's uh, enjoyed a lot of different things uh, for holidays and stuff. So, oh, well, that, that, I'm happy to hear that. Home, when she went home, she uh, took uh, the recipe for my. Um, lasagna and they enjoyed it so uh 
uh, she took gonna and she tried the spaghetti one, so uh, she enjoyed it. She's she's a she's a joy. So I'm lucky to have her. Oh yes, it, uh, that makes me feel good that you have that uh, support and that you're able to teach others because you get to teach yourself too. So that uh, again, that makes me happy to hear. So thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, because I, I can no longer stand up at the stove. So I've learned how to use electric fry pan and crock pots and all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff. Uh, be until I got eggs and now uh, eggs and now I'm using my oven again and uh, so it's yes. it's it's therapeutic for you too, here for your <laughs> you know when you're used to doing stuff it it gives you uh you know uh, a chance to uh, uh to uh, modify your skills. Yes, ma'am. I I hear you and I, I, you know everyone on the call can you know I hopefully relate to that because it's certainly a uh, very therapeutic. So thank you so much, and I appreciate you. You have a oh, great day. I appreciate you do, Alex. More, <laughs> more and more every day. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, next up is Thelma. Hi, Thelma. How can I help you today? Go ahead and unmute Thelma. Okay. Good. Hello? Well. Good day. Good afternoon. Still. Good morning. Yes, yes uh, <laughs> I've had a cooking app. I, ooh, I don't know for how long. It's because, you know, I started back using my mother's crock pot and then I bought an instant pot and then I do slow cook food. Mm -hmm. Even cakes in a crock pot. I, I yes. love doing it. I do microwave yes. cupcakes and all, me, you know, and, what, a, and one too. coffee cake. Um, yes, <laughs> yes, me too. And, so oh, but, uh, but keep me to do it. And right now I'm retained because my son in law, he does all the chef cooking. So uh, <laughs> while y'all was on, I had to wait for my, I've been Walmart food ever since Walmart came in DC. I just had yes. my Walmart delivered my food, my detergent, my personal wow. items, all of it just delivered to the house because my menu today is going to be not corned beef hash, mm. but salmon hash. Oh, wow. It was salmon with hash brown potatoes with green onions and peppers in it. I want that to be my dinner because my lunch going to be my, I don't know if you ever heard of Marinburg ice cream. No, I've never heard of Marinburg well, ice cream. Well, you got to go down there and check it at the uh, Navy Yacht. My granddaughter worked there at the ice cream uh, company. She's in charge of Jubilee. And she brought me home some Marinburg ice cream. And that's every fruit that I ever want in my life is a net joker. And oh, oh, with wow. the young I'll, lady, I'll, she makes her yeah. own ice cream. But uh, it's dynamite. And, but for going on that, because I, I had, uh, I used to do, uh, what's that cooking? Uh, where you can get just one person meal, two person meal. It's a cooking channel and it's free. It's an app. Yeah. If I think of it, I'm going to send it to Diane. But it's it's a cool because I, I I used to use it when I moved when all my children went out. That's what I was using. That's what taught me how to buy. You know, low, that's the food. But it's yes. an app. It's a free app. It, it, it's for free for everybody, and you get your menus, and you can just like say barbecue ribs. You go up there and adjust the down ribs for one person or two people. It show you how much rib, what to buy, and go to Walmart and get it because they deal with Walmart. Most all of, all of them deal with Walmart now. And you can go yes, there and get it. But, uh, you know, I don't do much cooking, but hey, I'll do some <laughs> of it. Mm. Oh, I know that's right. I uh, I know at Am Pizza, they have a Marion Berry pizza. I forgot what it was, but I had it and it was pretty good. So I'll I'll definitely try that out. And thank you so much yeah, for that, oh, yeah. uh, for that knowledge. They got a, a, uh -huh. some Morris ice cream because she makes up her own flavors. Yeah, She makes yes. the ice cream right there in the shop and all. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I went there and watched because yes. I told her, I said, okay, you so terrific. I said, uh, what about homemade butter pecan? She went back oh, there. Wow. It, took, it took a while, <laughs> but she came back with some butter pecan and that real butter in it, too. I yeah. said, what? What's the it name of like the shop? Jubilee Ice Cream right there at the... Uh, oh, not, okay. At okay. Navy Yard. I'm going to say, well, right around the corner from her at Teeter. All it right, thank you. So, right thank you so much. There's, a, there's a bunch of cooking apps available. So, you know, that's why the app store is there for you to explore different apps. And what's that, that cook name? What's that nice. chef's name down at the wall? The new uh, chef. Uh, oh, yeah, Gordon. There's a uh, Gordon Ramsay. Um, His where, app is out yeah. free, too. Yes. It's, so so I, got, I've been meaning to try that. App for seniors. Gourmet yeah. meals for seniors. That's healthy. 
Yeah, yeah, so I do. Yeah, so I got to move on to the next person, panel. But okay, thank you so baby. much okay. for your thank input. You. I really uh, appreciate the information. You have a great day. You too, now. Um, yep. Next up is Yvonne. Hi, Yvonne. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. I'm ever so fine. And thank you. I enjoy. I could hear the passion in your voice um, that you enjoy cooking as much as I do, uh, Alex. <laughs> And I think that's wonderful. Now, when you order from the Tasty app, um, you can directly order from a Walmart. Is that a free delivery or what? No. Um, no, it's, it's, not gonna, it's not going to be free, but it's, it's um, it, it, so again, Tasty and Walmart have a partnership. So that way, when you add the item to your bag in the Tasty app, and then you want to go to the Walmart website, it takes you directly to Walmart's website. Um, for yeah. most things, if there's delivery, it's not free. Um, but you know, it, it just depends. I never ordered anything on Walmart online before. I don't know if there's like a limit before it becomes right. free, but I'm pretty sure there is a charge to it. Probably like $3.99, $4.99, something like that. So, but it's just really convenient to add those um, ingredients to your cart all at once. And then if you want to just add other things like regular household items and such, you sure can, but it gives you a great start off with just getting the food into your cart out of the way. So you can focus on maybe the other things that you may need for your house. Oh, yes, because I often go to Walmart to order cartridges for my printer. I uh, mm -hmm. absolutely carry lots mm -hmm. of uh, stuff that associated with your um, desktop computers and all. And I yes. enjoyed these apps. It was fun learning about them. I don't know if I'd play that game, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, I would say, um, yes, I, I would definitely try it out because you get oh to learn God. about Japanese culture. You get to learn about <laughs> Japanese cuisine. You get to see kind of what, what it's like, you know, because it is based on, you know, Japan and that area of it. So I, I it's see. pretty cool. So it's, it's it, you know, it's up to you. But, you know, it's always fun to have, you know, a game with something that you like. So I like yeah. cooking. I like games. So, hey, that, you know, that's something that... Yeah you know, I would be inclined to play. So it's it's up to you, but it's uh, it's always good to have a, a fun, a so fun thing. Yes, a recipe thing and, uh, you know, a video thing. So it's a different array. So no problem, Yvonne. It's always a pleasure to have you on. So thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. And I love your passion and enthusiasm. <laughs> oh, I appreciate it. You have a wonderful day. You as well. Oh, yes. Next up, hi, hi, Brenda again. How can I help you? Yeah. Alex, now that recipe you made, the shrimp, the curry shrimp with rice and butter beans, is that on the tasty or is that what you oh, made? Oh, no, no, no. That's, that's, that's from, from the past months and, and years. So that was just something that me and my uh, friend came up with and we made. So, oh, okay. Um, so you made but that was just, you. yeah, that was just, just a, hey, I actually cook. So, you know, you know, it's, uh, and it was, it's fine. <laughs> Thank you. I, uh, I I, that's what that. that <laughs> yes, it, it was. The, I, I didn't know about butter beans till last year, so my friend introduced me to it. So I've been uh, loving them since. And, uh, you know, that's what I did as a kid. I, uh, you know, with, you know, maybe some of the, you know, turmoil that I experienced, you know, I right. always watched cooking videos and, you know, I learned about food, about different methods of cooking, different types of cuisine okay. and such. So, you know, I, I'm grateful for that because that's also a conversation starter. You know, you just you know, when someone mentions a meal, you already know how it was like made in your head. So yes. it just feels really good to know about different things that you can make. So yeah. So yes, but yeah, no, I made them myself and with my friend. And okay. we came, you know, it was mainly from her because she, uh, my friend, she had like 20, 30 plus years in the food industry. So, the, you know, to, to I'm just learning from her, but, you know, also okay. um, giving her advice on different things that I've learned throughout the years. So it's, it's a, a community and like a, Friend, mm -hmm. you know, thing sure that she can do. Good. So. Good. And you know, one <laughs> other thing I wanted to add, I taught my oldest son how to cook and now he thinks he can cook better than me. Oh, that <laughs> sounds familiar, Brenda. I told his mother, I said, no, you can't. I taught you. <laughs> I taught Aww. you everything you know, but he, he's a good cook too. He is too. And one other thing, I got my, my gift today and I just want to thank you again. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, no problem. I hope you enjoyed, Brenda. I, yes. I had fun sending them out. So, yes. You know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate thank you, you, as always. Um, thank you. Next up, um, and I'm going to come right back to you, but we haven't heard from Mr. Crawford yet, so I'm going to get to him and then get to your question. And then that will be the last question for the day, okay? Um, okay. Before I, That's fine yeah, with before, I, yeah, before I answer Mr. Crawford, um, please, if you have any feedback about today's lesson, um, we're always looking for feedback or critiques um, about... Um, 
about what we um, are presenting. So please email me at the email I put in the chat, abel at wildtech.org. And then if you'd like to add Teresa on as well, or just email Teresa, her email is tjames at wildtech.org. So um, thank you so much for that. Um, Mr. Crawford, you don't have a question? You sure you don't want to ask anything? Oh, I think he got off the call. <laughs> oh, it's all right. Hey, Anne, how can I, I assist you? I wanted to know if um, the, are those recipes, if they have particular recipes to uh, uh, like cook in your um, crock pot or your um, slow cooker or your um, air fryer. Yeah, so if in the, I know in the Tasty app in particular, um, they, uh -huh. in the Discover button, they have different methods on, um, on cooking. So look, it says what I recommend for you, trending Tuesday. Um, there's different ways of cooking. It might have not been here. It might have been in the in the uh, other app. Yeah, I think it was on the other app, my bad. So, Super cook, um, oh, okay. So look, using your chicken breast, Asian, using your almonds, appetizer and snacks, using your mixed nuts, French. Um, so there's um, like oven free. So if you wanna type in air fryer, you can type in air fryer and look, you can oh, look frozen chicken recipes. tenders in an yeah. air fryer, air fryer chicken fingers, air fryer French crunchy onion chicken, um, air fryer instant pot baked eggs, hard boiled air fryer eggs, air fryer hard eggs, air fryer roasted almonds. So if you type in whatever you want, so like let me put in crock pot, type search, and then look, you can oh, make 13 okay. recipes how to make slow cooker crock pot dumplings, crock pot honey glazed carrots, crock pot corn on the cob. So in the menu section, because again, each one of these, the search bar is a little different. So you want to go to the menu button and then you can search for the recipes with the ingredients that you have. So look, if I want to delete an ingredient, I just tap on it and tap on it again, just if I want to include it or not. So you can always edit um, what's in your pantry um, um, on the spot. So it's really convenient. Thank you. Thank you for answering that. I appreciate you, Alex. No problem. It's I. Uh, I learned and that I, myself I was, just now too. I was involved with your your uh, desire to be a great cook. Uh, we might find you at a restaurant one day. Oh, <laughs> uh, I uh, definitely. I uh, thought I. You know, I love me. I love me some food shows. Food Network is like, you know, something my go to. I like Kitchen Nightmares, um, Master Chef. Um, I like Lydia's. I like all the PBS stuff. Um, for cooking and such. So mm -hmm. there's, uh, there's all different types of ways you can learn um, how to cook. YouTube has a lot of great stuff, you know? So you can, you can learn to cook from everywhere. It's just putting in um, that effort and, you know, um, writing things down really helps you remember a lot of things. So, yeah. Um, so yes. Yeah, it really brought like memories back with me and my Nana. So I appreciate that. I needed that today. Oh yes, it's a uh, no no problem. It's my pleasure, and uh, you know, bring, it brings nostalgia to me too. You know, cooking was something that, um, like I always say, I found therapeutic. It got my mind off of maybe the things that may be going on in my life. So mm -hmm. you know, it's it's a uh, it's you know how like 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 the video said, us it, cooking is what makes us human at the end of the day. So yeah, you know, you just uh, got to be grateful for what you have and uh, what you know. And you always got a desire to learn more because it doesn't matter again where you're at. You know, if you just learn more, you know, knowledge is power. So that's yes, uh, yes, it is. You know, that's just it's that's just so how true. I kind of operate yes, myself. Sir. And uh, you know, it just allows you to become a better person and a better human in general. So um, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, um, it is twelve o'clock. We're gonna wait for our, um, for Crystal to come on. So go ahead. Oh yeah, my drink, baby. Get uh -oh. something. To, get something. <laughs> get something to eat. Get something to drink. You see, I have. I still have my coffee uh, ready. So just uh, you know, just relax for a few minutes or so, and she'll be on in a couple minutes. Okay. And we'll see you at one thirty. Yes, I'll be assisting Teresa today. So um, again, I. Enjoy your lunch. Don't eat too much. What you eating, Selma? Who that said that? Ann. <laughs> what am I eating? Sausage. Oh, good. I hate it. Turkey sausage and peanut butter. Oh, okay. Well, I, I like bread. the sausages. I don't know if I like the peanut butter. I like peanut butter separate, but that, well, that, that might be a combination. No, that, mine's, that, and, no, mine's separate. 
It's oh, okay. peanut butter on, on my peanut butter is on Ezekiel bread. I ain't oh. got it together. No, I, uh, I'm not expecting nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that's not like that prayer nasty food. Because <laughs> mm. I later on, I think by 1.30, I'll be eating my ice cream. I got ice cream with never wafers too. So, um, oh, okay. Then I eat my half brown and Simon's later on. <laughs> what, you, what did you say the name of that uh, ice cream place is? Right there on uh, at the at the Navy Yard, Jubilee. Jubilee, okay. Jubilee ice cream. It's the only ice cream company there because all the rest of the stores sell ice cream. You know, like hard tea to sell some. I think another store sells some, but Jubilee make it right there. Yeah, right there. I'm mm. like you. I want me some butter pecan. Yeah, when she made that butter pecan for me, that's it. Mm -hmm. I think I paid. Hello, everyone. Crystal is on. So let's welcome, to today. Uh, okay. let's welcome Crystal for today's lunch club. I really appreciate you guys for staying on, oh, and uh, um, and let's yeah. let's give Crystal a round of applause yeah, and, a, and a warm welcome yeah, for um, hosting the, today's session. So thank you so yeah. much, Crystal. Hello, Crystal. How are you doing Hello, today? Everybody. That beautiful Crystal with the beautiful hairdo. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. How, which part I want the long, that. the curly, or the bald? <laughs> which part I want? <laughs> Good afternoon, Crystal. Good afternoon. Mm -hmm. How are you guys doing today? Gorgeous. Hello, mm -hmm. Crystal. Hi, Crystal. Did you guys eat anything yet? You guys got your lunch? I'm snacking on something. <laughs> okay, okay. It's good to hear. So um, we're just going to continue with the same book from last time, the Dick Gregory book, right? Um, oh, great. Yeah. Okay. okay. I guess we'll mm -hmm. we'll continue with that book until we finish it. I don't think. Yes, man. Yes. Mm. Here, let's see. I was trying to find the audio. What's the name of the book? I forgot. Um, it's called The Essential by Dick Gregory. Give me one second. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. The school canceled classes yesterday after a shooting on campus Monday afternoon. Fortunately, the student who was shot is recovering. Now you should be able to see the, the book title and everything. Okay, Essential Dick Gregory. Okay. Yeah, that's the that's the name of the book, The Essential. <laughs> is there a way we can um, uh, interact with this on our iPad? Is there a way? It was just 56 years. Um, yeah, so you have to go to... More than 30 years from... You have to go to the... Um, the Google Store? No, ECPL. I'm sorry, I can't. Somebody kill your television. Yes, somebody, please. Uh, we don't want to listen to the news. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. What did you say, Miss Crystal? Okay, you should be able to access it through the DCPL app. DCPL, DC Public Library. Right. Mm -hmm. so let me see if I can go to it now. Um, okay. And then we can have it on our iPad. Mm hmm. Yeah, oh. you can read it. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Okay. The app is on the iPad. Is right. That Right there oh, on the iPad. Okay. Thank you, guys. And I just have to go to the chapter we were in. Let's see. Oh, man, I wish my mind can hold a thought longer than a second. Okay, Father, thank you. Thank you for what I do have. Just said go on to. Yes, you should be able to go on to the um, DCPL app. Go to the PCL uh, uh, the public the PC, library. Yeah, the and, public library app. Yes, mm -hmm. and, and then once I go on that, put in the Dick Gregory Essentials. Dick, Essentials Dick Gregory. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Where my pen have fallen? Oh, here it is, right here in front of my face. Good gracious. Okay. 
It's when you can't find something because it's right in front of your face. It's where you don't look, right in front of you. Okay. Or even glasses, they're still in front of your eyes. <laughs> when you can't find stuff. Yeah. yeah. I was looking for mine, and they were on the top of my head, so don't feel bad. <laughs> Oh, okay. I can see because they're on my eyes and I'm looking for them. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> okay, and essentials, Dick Gregory. Essentials. Mm -hmm. Was that two C's? Essential. I'll figure it out. Two S's, baby. Oh, two S's. Thank you so much. Appreciate mm -hmm. that. Some days are more challenging than others. At least I got something coming in today. Some days I don't get no info coming in. <laughs> hi, Crystal. Uh, hi, everybody. How are you doing? How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Uh, you and Dick uh, Gregory broke us down pretty good last week. <laughs> yeah, we had a good conversation afterwards. Yeah, you broke us down last week. I appreciate <laughs> that, baby girl. You read so well. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, I'm just waiting for her to find the book, so I want to, you know, so she can be on the same page. Gregory, uh, yeah, I've been waiting for you to come back on for this. I had it marked. I even had an alarm set. <laughs> I wanted to have more of this book and read more of it. Mm -hmm. and that's now, no now that I have you, I can't even get a thought out, but I got it. I wrote it down now, so public libraries too. And the downloads of Dick Gregory. I'm not going to try it now. I'll do it afterwards. I'll just follow along with what you're reading now. Okay. Sounds Thank good. you so much for your patience and everyone else. All no right. Problem. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Nice. No, said no problem. Okay. Thank you. All right. So I'll just get started. So I believe we left off on this chapter um, after talking about his dad and everything and how he felt about his daughters because of how he was raised with his father, um, the relationship between his mother and father. Those are the last things we read about um, last time. So now we're on the next chapter of developing his gifts. Okay. Cultural opportunities in St. Louis. The school system in St. Louis was very good because the St. Louis Symphony Orchestra would do concerts for the school kids. We get half a day from school to go downtown. It was a wonderful feeling sitting there, seeing the people with the violins and the conductor sophisticated with the tux on and everything. Probably one of the greatest assets a kid had in St. Louis as far as culture was concerned was the Money Opera. Bob Hope came in and played in the original Roberta. I was able to see Showboat all of the top operas, all of your top Broadway plays. When I was a little hoodlum back home, we used to say we were the only hoodlums with culture. You could snatch a pocketbook in St. Louis and be whistling a tune from Carousel while doing it. We got to see all the top operas from June to September and we go every night because they had free seats. There was something about this type of music that I would come home and I would just feel like I was somebody. It was a wonderful feeling to be able to one sec, let me move this. Turn on the radio, the stuff that you never listen to, and to be able to turn it on and can hum it or whistle the whole opera all the way through. It was miles from our house, but we take off at six o'clock and get to the opera just about the time it was starting. We would go in and rent the opera glasses. 15 cents to rent the glasses, $2 deposit. I used to live for the day when I can go out with my $2 in my pocket. You never missed it on a Sunday night. Game wars wouldn't start until the opera was over. It was wonderful, beautiful affair. It was outdoors. You just sit way up so far, you couldn't tell if the performers were white or black. It was a good mm -hmm. for intermission to be able to walk down and walk in between the rich people that were out there down in the front row seats. It was a beautiful thing to be able to do this. What I like best about it, this was the only time that I could identify with the rich man because I knew he was sitting down front and he was saying the same thing I was seeing. I don't know what would have happened to the country had the richest man and the poorest man not been able to seek some form of entertainment after days or weeks work. 
in the neighborhood we lived in, we could, we would go to the place where you pay 15 cents for a bottle of beer and you call a honky tonk show. That entertainment was just as important as the guy spending a hundred dollars for a table because you had a place where you could go and leave yourself to sit and look at a performer. Every city in America should have free sections where they can get top performers because it's a hell of a thing for a kid to be able to identify with the top show business people that you idolize, people that you read about every day, track and field. At night, I would lay down in bed and I couldn't sleep for wanting tomorrow to get here so I could get out on track so tomorrow would be over so Saturday we could have our track meet. This was a whole new period in my life. Nothing was interesting to me anymore. It was all track and rightfully so because I was never anybody until I had track. To get the feeling that I got out of track, that's a clean, beautiful, honest to goodness feeling. Feeling You are participating in a sport where there's no monetary reward. There's no professional guarantee. You're out there all by yourself. You can't blame it on nobody. You can't get out there and have a guy dislike you because one guy's getting all the glory. Track's not like that. Track was so beautiful for my mind. I caught myself praying one day and I had to stop because it dawned on me. What right do I have asking you to help me win? How disrespectful can I be to the others? Because when I ask for you to help me win, I've completely canceled out the others. Actually, I'm praying for their loss, so then I quit praying. When I came to the line, I realized and I prayed different. Going to bed every night and training right, trying to keep rules, the laws, the regulations. If I can't win the race with this, may the best man win. But I had the attitude, but I had the attitude I'm bringing to the line. 118 pound of bones I'm bringing to the line with a body that was frail and had missed many good meals. A body that has been well kept in the last year that has laid down the law for training. Now, if you can bring something better than this, I take my head off to you. It's absolutely your race. This was the attitude I formed running. You find out things when you're out there. It's a hell of a thing. And I think it'd be better work today if every man, if every man the world over could extend himself to complete exhaustion. Complete exhaustion for good at the end. I've had track meets that got so damn high in St. Louis, 110, 109. In the wintertime in cross country, your hands get so cold, your feet get so cold. I've had track meets that I swore after this race is over. As God is my witness, I'll never run track again. This is how grounding those races will get. It's an individual sport, and you're out there all by yourself. Nobody can help you. I used to get real nervous the night before a race. I used to lay up in bed and think about all the boys that had a chance to win it. I get up the next morning and I'd be so damn tired that I couldn't move. I found out beyond a shadow of a doubt that a man loses just as much energy physically and mentally laying up in the bed the night before a race as you do out there on the track. You can reenact the whole race. You close your eyes, you see him coming, you go that whole mile. You can imagine how tired I am now mentally. I lost a race because of that. So now I decided that I would never, as long as I live, worry. I knew that if I didn't break this habit in high school, I was going to take it into college. And you get to the point where you are so used to worrying over a meet that I used to worry on Saturdays when we didn't even have track meets. I was so used to worrying at nighttime when everybody was going to a party. I would go out to public school stadium and just get on the track. It was the only thing I had while I was somebody. It was the only thing I ever touched that made me. So anytime I needed anything, I used to just go out and lay out on the track and believe and lay in on the grass and just thank the gods in heaven because I couldn't believe this thing here. I used to go out and just look at the empty stands and then laugh about how full they were during the track meet and made myself believe I, I brought them in. Track was a background to all the things that have happened to me. It was the attention getter that I needed. It was the discipline that I needed. I had too much inside of me for it not to be channeled somewhere, somewhere, some way, somewhere. I could do it all by myself. On a team, nothing. It had to be tracked. I get aggravated about a situation and just go and run. I would get up five o'clock in the morning and run around the square block in front of my house. I was not running to be in shape. I was running so the working people that be going to work and early would see me and know me. I would get up every morning. I would run around the block from 5.30 to 8 o'clock, constantly, constantly for attention. When you run and get mentally and physically tired together, you're a different man. When I would run around the block, I could concentrate. I could think. And nine times out of 10, whenever I wanted to think, I would run. I wasn't training. I was just out there running, trying to get something off my mind. 
I was out there running because something happened that I didn't understand that I was trying to figure out. So I ran and I ran and I ran. I go into my last year and there are many things <clears throat> that are happening to me, many things racially that people slam me in the face with. But these things were minor because I had that one stick. I had the old neutralizer. I'm not inferior to anyone. Okay, your daddy's a good chemist. I'm a good miler. Your daddy lives up there on the hill. Well, goddamn it, even if he ever comes down on the track, you're in my kingdom. And take yours. And when I come up there, I'll be in yours. But I might practice and take yours away from you one day. Because I found out through track that if you practice what you put in, the time and effort and the sacrifice and build up to what you want, that you can move up to that block and say, okay, baby, I'm in a race now. Some in our high school band. I had to get an eight o'clock class, so I went into the band director. We had one of the best high school bands in the world, bar none. I asked him, could I get in the band? He had, he had asked if I had any music or who I study under and, that, and could I read music? I told him I'd never been in nothing. And he told me this was the senior band. Everybody in there had music for at least 10 years. So I explained to him that I had to get an early class because I was working in the steel mill. Got off at seven and I can get there at eight. And I get out of school at two. I could practice track and go home and sleep. He told me I, I could, if I could came in early and cleaned up in the band room and had all the music put out. So I signed up for the senior band and I got in. In the process of being in the senior band, I used to steal the music and take it home at night and take it to work with me. Eventually, I learned how to play it. I still can't read music, but the drummer who played Tim, Tim Palmy drums was sick one day. And we were getting ready for a big concert. The band director was real shook up and I got on those drums one day and the guy never got his job back. As a matter of fact, I had some scholarships in music when I finished high school. This was a very important part of my life in high school because we made long trips and had band concerts. We played very heavy music, Beethoven, Bach, Mozart, anybody you would name. He prided himself on being able to play the hardest music. We would study six months, night and day, just to get ready for one concert and then go to one state final. I never will forget the day that we had our big concert. It's my first big break as far as music was concerned. Long as I live, I always remember that he knew I couldn't play music and he had the whole band to direct. But yet and still, there was some kind of way he would look at me and let me know I'm not supposed to be playing. He would always nod his head when it came time for me to come in. He did this three solid years without missing it. And eventually, when I went away to college, I joined the college symphony band. This guy did the same thing. It's just unbelievable, the communication system they had. Then I played in the marching band, and this is probably the biggest thrill to march in a parade. I think this was the thing that topped it all off. The parades that you marched in, I played bass drum, which is the most important thing in the marching band. Yeah. Then all the football games, it was a great thrill because in the wintertime, during football season, I ran cross country. And during halftime, I came right in from cross country and played music in the band. When I went to college, I did the same thing. A lot of cross country meets, they start before the halftime. We run around and go outside the football stadium and come back in. And I had a lot of good times. I won a lot of races because I was in a hurry to get back so I can get my bass drum and play in the band. This was the period when my mother came to the first concert and set up in the balcony. She wasn't sitting down front with the rest of the mothers. I looked up in the balcony and there she sat. I didn't know who I resented the most, mom or the system there. She was so happy while she was sitting there. No mother in the whole place could light it up like my mother because she just couldn't conceive. She just couldn't believe what she was hearing. Before school started back, I waited for that high school record book to come out. I didn't see my name listed in the scholastic yearbook, so I went downtown. Hickey, who was the superintendent of schools, was not in. I talked to someone in his office and asked them why I was not put when I, why I was not listed in the book. They explained to me that you run up in Jefferson at this all Negro city track meet and it's just as good as ours. But for some reason or another, they don't list the Negro track meet. But he was sure that Pittsburgh Courier carried it. That's when I decided that I was going to be listed and I was gonna be get credit. I went back home, I talked to my coach and I asked him why wasn't I listed? 
He told me I had to run with the white boys before I get listed. This culture man was Warren St. James, who had gone to Southern Illinois University and ran the distance, runs and taught me an awful lot about distance, taught me how to win. I decided to talk to a group that was organizing a march on the Board of Education about overcrowded conditions. We planned to walk out of school when we started back that September. There was a lot of tension in the school and I didn't feel right walking out. It seemed like everybody that had decided to walk out were always getting put out of school or getting in trouble. And still, I knew the grown people involved were ethical and moral. We walked out that school door. It seemed like many people were afraid. Pop Beckett, a physical education teacher and mentor, ran up to me with a baseball bat. He said, Gregory, don't walk out that door. I said, Pop, I have to. I have to for myself and I have to for my mama. Mama didn't know I was one of the best milers in the country this year and mama's going to find out. I joined them in the last minute and we marched out and the kids from the other schools marched out too. We marched downtown and then getting downtown by moving from one end of the line to the other. The press thought I was the leader. They came and talked to me about it, asked me what we were marching for. I told them we were marching because of overcrowded conditions. And I was marching because my name didn't show up in the scholastic book and I wanted my mother to know. We met and marched to city hall. The job that I had was running from the front end of the line to the back end, telling people to stay in line, watch the traffic, don't do anything that's going to give us a bad name. Nobody could understand what this was. It was like it turned the town upside down. We stood there and the people at City Hall came out and listened to the leader. When I got back to school, everybody was telling me I was going to be expelled. They said some people thought it was communist inspired. My mother asked me about it. Was it communist that had anything to do with it? I said, mom, I don't even know how to spell communism. The next week, the district, integrate, the district integrated the track program and the cross country program. This is when things really start to open. When Warren St. James was short, very collegiate, very sensitive and very touchy. He was the type of coach who worked hard when he was running in college, but he was never the winner. I think everything where he fell short in track, he wanted for me. This is when I really started to develop. This is when I found out about pushing that extra mile when you didn't have to and train it and found out that this is the thing that gave you the edge. He was with me all the time. He was like my father. He would come by in the morning. And he would always come and check the class where I was. And then he was the one that suggested I go to Southern Illinois University. I decided to go. And when I went to college, I needed someone's concern, someone who had been there and knew certain things about it. So I didn't go and completely blank on it. He came through at the right time. Had it not been for Warren and track, I would have gone, I would have gone far enough just to find another disappointment. I knew nothing about training for distance. There weren't too many black coaches in St. Louis that knew that much about training for the long distance races races. We had predominantly controlled the short dashes. Warren was probably one of the most excellent coaches in the country as far as distance running is concerned, and he gave me free what he bought and paid for. I arrived at Southern Illinois University on March of 52, and we were on the quarter system there. I got there on a ground, Greyhound bus with my shopping bag. Mom had put some food in there, which embarrassed me a whole lot. I never will forget that day I arrived on campus. It's wonderful to be the greatest thing in your community, which is the world when this is all you know. You go on with respect for your past record, but the attitude where on campus meant I had to do a complete physical breakdown of this starship and start all over again to prove it there. When I arrived at Southern Illinois University, the pride in being able to look back over what I came through and the things I had been through and say, you made it, you're here. Just the thought of being in college fascinated me so much, nothing else mattered. It was like I had defied the whole system to get there. I will never forget entering the first day, seeing the kids on the campus, getting to meet new faces, getting to meet people that hadn't heard of me, and then just enough people dealing with athletics. And do you know, the bulk of students were from small towns that had never heard of Dick Gregory. And this was a thrill to be able to come out and give me a chance to get to know them from the ground. Not because I came from St. Louis as a big athlete, but to prove myself there. This was the first time I had been thrown in with this many white folks. This was the first time I had a white instructor. This was where the integration of high school track helped me tremendously. Talking to the white kids who I ran against, meeting with the white coaches, and then having a the respect of whites simply through running track. 
there were many things that happened in college that I don't know how I would have to adjust to. Just coming out of the old segregated neighborhood, all segregated school and being thrown in, there were the most kids we had out of 4,000 was 400 black. It mm. showed me, it showed because the blacks were always together. The blacks that didn't run in bunches were the ones coming from communities with integrated schools and integrated neighborhoods. But there in Palmerdale, Illinois, chance we had, we would go downtown to the black section and hang out the same way we did when we were in St. Louis. The white taught thought it was a rare privilege when they were invited to go with you. This was like a myth to them. Like many things in the country are myths to whites. Although they were accepted in our neighborhood, many people feel that the black community is segregated. The blacks are segregated against, but we do not segregate. Many places will go in, go to in Carbondale, whites just assume they weren't accepted, mainly because we were not accepted in many of those white places in town. I developed my personality, tried to get me an attitude, talking to the teachers, talking to the kids. I tried to find out why is it I'm 20 years old and I've never seen this many white folks in my life. And I knew they got more white folks in St. Louis than at the Southern Illinois University. I used to see them and see them on election day. White folks came out and give us a picnic on election day. Pick up little black babies, peeing all over them, patting them on the back, give them some ice cream. Never did see these old white folks no more until the next election. Matter of fact, couldn't even go back to the park no more until the next election. So I'm fascinated trying to find out what makes white folks stick, white folks tick. Figured I got to get this white piece of paper from SIU. Get out. Get on out there with them. It's a white man's world I'm living in. So maybe I'm supposed to have to learn to act white. Damn, I don't know. I want to learn how to act white though. I look around and one of them is committing suicide. Another is selling a secret to another country. I got to wonder, do I want to be like this man? Sometimes when you sit back and look at it and figure out what's happening, it's probably the world's greatest comedy. Just sit back and laugh yourself to death. That's what it's coming to. I started getting hung up in social life in college and trying to learn white folks, trying to get me a white piece of paper to go out and get me one of those white folks jobs. Then I see so many black kids graduated from that white school end up in the post office, end up delivering mail, end up driving cabs. Here I'm living in a white man's world, going to his school, fixing to get a piece of paper and damn near forgot he's going to send me out there with that black face. So... If I sat there for four years and read all the books and not got me an attitude, I would have walked out of Phi Beta Kappa straight as on my transcript, not knowing that when I walked into the big department store before I could even tell them I made all as accountant, they tell me they're not hiring porters today. We don't need no elevator operators today. Maybe that's why so many of our top blacks are so upset. They're fighting a double thing. It's the worst thing in the world to be a soldier. And they don't put no ammunition in your gun. They gave us a bad school to go to when we were kids. And when I decided to go to that white school, they want to give me the same test. They give that white boy. They even give a horse a handicap. Then again, maybe they're right. Maybe he can look and see he's made me so strong. He better put some weight on my back. Give, give the handicap to the other boy because I think he needs it. So I'm in college having a ball too, running all the track in the world. Got a wonderful coach, Doc Lingle was his name, hell of a man. One of the few men in the country that I've ever met who can take an athlete and make a man out of him first. Made such a hell of a man out of me, I never lost no races no more. Finished second a couple times, but I didn't lose him. Another man won it. As I developed, I was very confused because I was seeing things going on. Every time I go past the athletic department, I didn't see anything but black athletes pictures hanging up until I looked at the top of the ceiling at Outstanding Athletes of the Year. Not one black had ever won. So I decided to get my name up there. I came down here to try and get me an attitude and ended up in a struggle. Not a black struggle. No, I've always been an individual first, an American second, and a black third. I qualify to be up there. Let me get out and see what I can do. Talk to the people. I got me an attitude now. I found out how they were doing it. I just walked over and told my coach, if I don't make outstanding athlete of the year, I'm going to quit. So I'm sitting there that night and everybody's nervous. They even flew one of the big sports commentators down from St. Louis for the big 
Awards. They called my name, Dick Gregory, Outstanding Athlete of the Year. I felt kind of bad I had to get that honor with a threat, although I did deserve it. I sat there nervous and scared, but I was so cool that they couldn't even hate me enough to give it to another Black because I didn't go in as a Black. I went in as an individual and made them think it was, wasn't was anything pertaining to race. Hold on one second. Somebody had to break the system. I couldn't do anything but run track. Never picked up a baseball, couldn't play baseball, didn't know how to swim yet. They gave it to me though. They broke the ice. Then they gave it to another black person. We've been making it ever since. The sports commentator went back to St. Louis, did a 30 minute show talking about Dick Gregory, greatest athlete, athlete ever to hit Southern Illinois University, St. Louis boy. Yep. I ran a lot of track, got to know a lot of, about life and white folks, even got in a Theta Xi variety show. I was doing satire and didn't even know what satire was. I won the variety show in the fraternity and I was, I was in thought we all should have won, but we didn't raise no hell because they didn't want to give everything to the blacks that night. We didn't complain. We went out and bought a little trophy, though, because we knew we won it. It was the first time I ever got up in front of a crowd of white folks and talked, made them laugh. I kind of thought, man, this is almost as good a feeling as winning a track meet. But I'm a little safer to running track because it's much easier running against a white boy than trying to get one of them to laugh at you because he might be mad at you. Everything you're saying might be funny as hell and he might not laugh, but there ain't nothing he can do with this feeling of going to attract. I had a different thing going there in high school. It, I was just fighting being poor and being on relief. In college, I was fighting being Black for the first time in my life. When I was fighting, just being poor in St. Louis and ran one of them good track meets on Saturday, it made me the hero until the next Saturday rolled around. Then I went out on the track and recharged my battery again. It was a hell of a thing to go down there at SIU, run a wheel. All the manhood I used to get out of running on that track, they used to steal from me every time I walked off of it. With the last penny I had, I went to the black movie in Carbondale with a friend of mine, Leo Wilson, a black man. Walked in and Leo broke for the balcony. I see the white usher standing there and I said, I'll take care of you next time. I haven't got no money. He smiled and said, okay, aren't you Dick Gregory? I said, yeah. He said, we've heard a lot about you. It's nice to have you here at Southern Illinois University. I said, thanks a lot. Then I ran up with Leo. It was the coolest place I've been. And since I arrived, wasn't nothing in the balcony but Blacks. There were a bunch of athletes, so I felt like we had a, the balcony made. Looked around and saw a couple of white folks up there. I started going to the movies, and sometimes I tipped the guy and go up in the balcony. It felt so good sitting up there. Then one day, I promised one girl I was going to take her to the movies and decided to take another girl and walked into that movie and sat downstairs. I didn't even know what was happening. Didn't even know the movie theater was segregated. All I remember was when I was a kid you live for the day you could sit upstairs in the balcony not realizing it was an all-black movie theater so you pay top dollars to sit in the balcony I didn't realize I'd been tipping that white boy for nothing didn't realize he was telling me it was a pleasure having me in this town while I'm on my way up to the segregated check never realized that when the balcony got full full and there were plenty of seats downstairs you had to stand didn't even realize when the girl jerked back and said, I don't want to sit down here. I'm so busy thinking. I don't want to run across the other girl. I said, come on, baby, you're with me. Sat down and those people looking at me. But I thought they were looking at Dick Gregory, the athlete. Then the usher walks down and says, Greg, I'm sorry, but you got to go upstairs. I said, that's okay. I'll sit down here tonight. Everything will be all right. I started to ask him to lean down so I could tell him why I couldn't go up in the balcony about the girl I was supposed to have up there and how I didn't want her to see me. Then his attitude changed. I said, you have to go upstairs. I thought he was playing. Then I figured maybe he wanted the tip that I usually give him. So now a commotion is going on. Everybody's looking at me and he said, I'll be back. He comes back with the manager who says, Mr. Gregory, can I see you? That's when I knew something was wrong. When white folks call you Mr. Something's wrong. I told the girl I'll be right back. Never knew I was leaving her down there with all that hell. The blacks upstairs in the balcony started saying, my man, go baby, go. They were cheering me. I thought it was because of the last Saturday's victory. 
I walked upstairs and Amanda breaks it to me. You can't sit downstairs. I asked why. The black seats are in the balcony here. It's the only place you can sit. Man, I was destroyed. He ruined my whole myth. All I wanted was the day I could get myself into a position where I could always sit in the balcony. Now he tells me that my place, that's, that that's my place. I'm so confused because I didn't know if the black guy back home in the black theater had been cheating me for all those years, or this guy here was trying to destroy something I had. So I told him to put me up there and he called the police. When the cop walked up, I couldn't help but realize how many times I slipped by the theater in St. Louis, laid $2 on the usher to save me a balcony seat. And when I got there, the usher had gone and the balcony was full. I thought about how many times I wanted to call the police and either get my $2 back or get the policeman to make them put me up in the balcony. Now, here's a man calling the police to make me get up in the balcony. I was so disgusted. I was so horrified. I had to get the young lady because I realized where what I left her down there with. I went and I got her and I left with my head well tucked. As I walked out the door, the last thing the guy said was, be sure and get your money back. I paid to see a movie and I ended up going through the heaviest drama. No man alive could have written a script for what I went through on that night. If they had to pay me for what I went through, all the money in the world wouldn't have paid it. So I looked back at him and said, keep it, I'll be back. The next night I went back by myself and I sat downstairs. They said I was crazy. They gave me the okay, let him sit downstairs, he's crazy. So I brought some other people with me that might not be crazy, that might not be doing it because they're Dick Gregory, the athlete at Southern Illinois University. Had I thought about it, I should have asked my coach or asked the president of the university or asked the mayor who taught there. In 1953, Hollywood produced the movie The Road. This little theater in Carbondale paid a lot of money to get that movie. We sat downstairs one day and the manager asked me to come up to his office. He was scared to death. Economics won out. He told me about the money he paid for this movie and he asked me not to sit there while the movie was on because he didn't want to lose customers. But right after the movie, it would be okay. I'm so damn sick and tired of negotiating for my rights. I don't know what to do. Force against persuasion, I guess. So I said, okay. And after that, every time I go downstairs and I hated it because up in the balcony is where I really wanted to go, but I couldn't. Everybody will tell you there that they knew me. He's happy-go-lucky. He was jolly, but I was dying a slow death. Okay, and we're going to stop at that chapter. So the next chapter is Carbondale. Do you guys have anything y'all want to talk about as far as this chapter is went, or these last few chapters have gone? Any comments? Why do we have to stop? You said, why do we have to stop? You want to keep going? Mm hmm Okay. I just wanted to make sure there's, you know, just in case you wanted to talk about it, we had time for that as well. But well, I, I don't know what everybody else think. Anybody else have an opinion? I just thought to keep going. <laughs> okay. Well, we can keep going until, until 1 o'clock, until the time is up. That's no problem at all. Uh, yeah. uh, Thank yeah. you. Okay. One, one second. Yeah. You have a good reading voice. I mean, you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so the next chapter is Carbondale. It's a hell of a thing when you're a grown man. You walk down the street and look at your buddies on the track team with you, and all you can do is look through the window. Never will forget one guy. I looked at him sitting in a restaurant eating a steak sandwich with his girl, and I looked through the window and saw all of the athletes' pictures hanging up around the wall. I didn't see mine. And damn glad because it would be a hell of a thing to know my picture could get in while I couldn't. I waved at the guy and said to myself, I'll crush him tomorrow on the track. If I went back and checked the books, I guess the black flunk out rate was pretty high. That school kept us so separated, we had to have two dances on homecoming, one with the white folks, and then we went in town and had our own that night. Had a ball too. No blacks were on the student council, so Sarder Finnegan came in with his muted tuba and the hottest tune he played was Don't Watch Around the Mulberry Bush, 
with anyone else but me. You kept me downtown next to the funky black tavern. All I heard was the gut bucket blues. So that's all I wanted to hear. And I just played the time. I'm sorry, said it again, Miss Dennis. Your, your, your voice. Am I going in and out? It sound like you were singing. I no, don't know it if it was my computer or what. It sounds good to me. It was straight. Okay. Okay, I'll keep reading. Then you can let me know if it's if it sounds um weird, okay? Okay. You kept me downtown next to that funky black tavern, and all I heard was the gut bucket blues. So that's all I wanted to hear, my college homecoming. I was kind of proud I could go too because I could get even with the white folks for the segregated restaurant. I had to walk past. Where you going, Greg? I got a little party to go to. See you tomorrow. I imagine it would have been fun to sit around with the boys on the track team after the season was over and drink beer. Couldn't take them out to my side of town because they just had one black cop there. His only beat was patrolling the two black taverns and he owned one of them. Didn't want them to see that. This was the town of Carbondale. That's where I first learned the bitterness of racial prejudice. That's when I first realized how deep it was. With all that misery and pain, I bit my lip and grind and grin and stuck with it long enough to weed out some good white folks. Oh God, the clothing store, I could sit there and talk with him. We used to go out and buy stuff I didn't even need just to be able to walk in that section of town going someplace. Oh God, who had the cleaners there, he really made me feel good. I could get credit there. I sat back to look at the people on campus. The president was a beautiful guy, Dr. Morris, hell of a man. Made a hell of a school out of that place. I sit back down now and wonder why he didn't break down all the segregation laws. Wonder why he didn't check on the prejudiced teachers. Had one teacher down there when he wrote black on the board. He put it in a small N. I waited until class was out came back and made the end the length of the blackboard. It was a funny thing to sit in the stands and hear a guy sit right behind you say, look at that nigga go. And then a white boy would dive at him and that black brother would shake loose and keep going. And you want to look back at that man and say, call him another N word. Any team that came to Southern Illinois University had more blacks than ours did. That's the only, that's the one that blacks secretly pulled for. People used to wonder, and I even had the dean ask me one time, how come Blacks sit by themselves? Y'all all free here. Because we don't want y'all to see us pulling for the other team that has the most Blacks on it. Yep, sit there doing an intra-squad scrimmage and listen to the Blacks on your team come back and say how hard they hit a white boy. And you say, well, you should have broken his leg, your own team. Then again, I guess the loyalty that the Black athletes have will always stick out. Whenever it was homecoming, we could have played against an all-Black team, and we wanted Southern Illinois to win. It's a hell of a feeling to sit there, and every time you see a Black on each side of the field getting the ball, you hope he goes for a touchdown. You still don't want your team to lose. In the Army. I got drafted in the Army. Went against the system the whole way because I didn't care. Didn't care about nothing. Didn't care about winning or losing or living or dying. I had fun while I was in the Army. The Army probably played a very important part in developing my show business career because I was some, so numb for those three years that people in the Army thought I was crazy. The things I say, an old colonel told me one time, you must be a comedian. You go down to the social service club tonight and get on that show. If you don't win it, I'm going to court martial you. I went down and won it, not because I was worried about being court martialed, but because I was funny. And I kept winning, and I kept winning, and I kept winning. And the next thing I knew, I was on the Army tour and had qualified to go to the All-Army show. The winners from there go to the Ed Sullivan show. And I prayed that night before I went to Fort Dix for that show. I said, Lord, it is my wish that I win. But if it's not thy will, please let it not be done. Thank God I prayed that way, because had I won that show, I would have been destroyed as an entertainer. I would have gone to the Ed Sullivan show in 1955, knowing nothing about show business, just being on the air as an accident. I would have thought I was a hell of an entertainer, and I would have had a different attitude. I toured all over with Army shows, never prepared for anything, just got up and started talking. Social talk, system of the Army, didn't get court martial while I was there. 
never did anything bad, but I guess wearing blue suede shoes with your army uniform wasn't good, or saluting with your left hand, or calling the colonel sergeant, or going on KP and asking to be paid. I never will forget the funny feeling when I got out of the army. The day before you get out, they ask you about your address. And for the first time in my life, I realized I didn't have a home. Mom is gone. It's a hell of a feeling when you have to give the government your address and you got to give them Southern Illinois University, Carbondale University, Illinois. That's where I live. And I was trying to be king. Now the training started three nights a week. I had to get out in the street and find strange people and talk to them and try to develop material. I used to hang out at a Walgreens store and catch the people coming down for their lunch hour to develop material on. Mm -hmm. Friends helped me get some clothes on credit, used them as, I re as a reference to say I had been in Chicago a long time. The guy I was working with for at the Esquire Lounge let me jack up my pride and say I was making $100 a week and had been there for four years. I guess when I went down to Linton's department store, I convinced them. So I didn't feel too bad at work. I was a little funnier than... And I was clean. I had new shoes, a new suit, a new shirt. Keeping my clothes clean almost cost me more than I was making. I changed suits every show, changed shirts every show. Never had done that before in my life. But I had such tremendous respect for those people sitting out there. And for the first time in my life, I was able to get a feeling that I didn't have to beat another man in a track meet to get. I didn't have to feel like I was somebody at the expense of another man losing. I remember then what my mother told me a long time ago when I made a sly remark to her and said, I wonder whose mother's son I'm going to beat this week. She looked at me and said, I wonder how those other mothers feel. I hope they're not as ashamed of their sons as I am proud of you. Then again, Richard, I guess they couldn't be because I'd be just as proud of you at the thought that you got in the race as I am with you winning. Now, for the, re for the first time in my life, I have something that's all mine, and I'm growing every day. I have people saying, that's Dick Gregory, and man, I'm not coming off at anybody's expense. Things start going up for me for the first time since high school. I felt that thirsty taste again. I'm learning, and I'm learning. I'm buying comedy records. A lot of guys accuse me of stealing their material after I made it. Had I not bought anything but comedy rec records, I have left I'd have felt like I was still in their material, but I was so enthused over what I was doing that I trained for comedy the same way I trained for track. That's why they can accuse me to the, to the day they die, and I'll never feel ashamed because I dug into the library and walked downtown and spent money for books I couldn't even afford. Old books, the same jokes they had on their records, I found them in, the, in those books, so I knew it wasn't theirs. I get up on the stage and everybody would tell me, you remind me of Red Fox. You remind me of Nipsey, Nipsey Russell. You remind me of Slappy White. Not because I was doing their material, but because they were the only black comics that had made it. Every now and then, somebody would say, you remind me of Bob Pope. You remind me of Milton Berle because of their topical stuff I was doing. Every night, my job was to watch television. I watched television from the time it came on in the morning until it went off at night. I had to learn entertainment. I bought the same amount of dignity and honor and respect to show business that I carried to the track. When a man would walk into a nightclub and want me to pay, want me, want to pay me to introduce him to introduce his party, I never took his money. When people would throw money up on the stage, I never bent over to pick it up. There were some nights I had more money thrown up on the stage at me than I was getting for my three nights work, but I would never let a man know I wasn't making hundred dollars a night. I dressed like I was making hundred dollars a night. I walked like I was making hundred dollars a night and I talked like I was making hundred dollars a night. I was not a gladiator. I was trying to be king. I wanted the same respect from people out there that I was giving them. I made it a policy that I would never go to a man's table if I thought the woman he was with in any shape, form, or fashion was giving me the eye. You can't give a man no more respect than that. And many times there were some beautiful women sitting there, but I always took the attitude that this man is paying my salary, not much of a salary, but he doesn't know how much I'm making and I have to give him this respect. Between working three days a week, watching television, the par show, all the comedy shows, Ed Sullivan, every form of, ent of entertainment I could watch. Then getting out in the daytime and catching the people and developing new material on them and buying all the comedy books I could buy. Yep, I was really proud of myself. I was working too hard to really be concerned about anything but trying to develop.
trying to find out why my, a man is such a different animal when he's out enjoying himself. I guess it's the system. The system had whipped him down so hard. Why is it a when a comic's up working or an entertainer's up working, if they are very bad, the people pull for them to be good. And the least little funny thing you say, they'll laugh. That's why an entertainer has a hell of a debt he owes to that audience. That's why I go out of my way to do benefits and go out of my way to try to help people. Because every time I do a benefit, every time I help someone, I feel like I'm saying things thanks to those ordinary people that push me all the way up to the top. One Sunday, I looked in the audience and a girl walked up to me and said, would you come back to the table and give me your autograph? I'd like to meet my, you to meet my sisters. I say, yes. That's why it's always so nice to be polite to people. Be nice. Never put yourself above the audience because in walking to that table, I didn't know I was going to meet my wife. I walked over and there was a little girl sitting there, very bashful and very excited, like God had walked over to the table. I asked them where they were from, Willard, Ohio, a small town. This was the first time they had ever been out to see a big entertainment. We were big to people who had never been in a nightclub before. I sat down and asked her name, and she said Lillian Smith. I asked her where she lived, and she told me. And during the conversation, she told me she worked at the University of Chicago. I said, well, I'm over there every day running track. Let's have lunch one day. She said, oh, no, you don't mean it. And she kind of tucked her head like I was the big entertainer, just saying something to be saying it. I said, I tell you what, you give me a phone number and I'll call you and I'll let you know exactly what day. She was so nervous she could hardly write it. I rolled this little piece of paper up and put it in my pocket. This was an afternoon show on Sunday. And when I went up to do the next show, I couldn't believe how she looked at me. Like she was afraid that nobody in Willard, Ohio would ever believe that she talked to this man. I thought it's going to give me a great thrill to call her because she doesn't believe I'm going to call. This was the summer of 58. They had stayed for the first maintenance, second and third show. When I was ready to leave, I walked past the table and told them good night. I left with the girl I was dating at the time. I took her home and went back to where I was living with my friends, Ozell and William. I lay there that night and got to thinking about that face. And then it dawned on me. That would probably be the way my mother would look in the nightclub. She never been one to she never been to one. She'd be excited. She'd run back home and say, Richard, 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 I spoke to the star of the show. I couldn't sleep that night because I visualized my mother coming back telling me that. Mom telling me I spoke to Harry, Harry Belafonte. I say no, mom. She say yes, he's going to call me. Early Monday, morning, early Monday morning, I called. I called that feel, with the feeling that I know the expression she's going to have on her face would be the same expression mom would have on hers. And I called here her expression on her voice over the telephone. She was excited. It was like I called my mother. This girl that looked so out of place in that nightclub, sitting there knowing that out of everybody in the nightclub, I asked for her number. She would look out of so out of place in the nightclub so I talked with her and told her I would call her back and we have lunch. She was so excited. It really made me feel just like I did when I was romping and stomping in my heyday. Nobody could stop me. Summer rolled around. I worked hard, worked very hard. Then I went into the hospital about August with yellow drawings. And I never called Lillian anymore because I felt like I wasn't good enough for her. The day I went to the hospital, I don't know, I called it at a job because I wanted to let her know I was going to the hospital. It seemed that letting her know I was going was like letting my mother know. I called her and you would never realize I hadn't talked to her in a month. The concern, why hadn't you called? Just like an excited little kid. I said, I don't know if I'll stay, but there, here's my number at the house. You can call and find out. They kept me lying there in the hospital thinking about how hard I had worked, how I was going to miss being at work on the weekend. Then when my friends came and told me about the people that were at the nightclub that weekend and how they missed me, how many of them were concerned, boy, that made me feel good. I will never forget that night when the visitors left. I looked around, there was Lillian. Something about the way she walked in, because in the VA hospital, you can't bring anything up. She bought me Hershey bars, grapes, and I don't, and I know she didn't slip them in. She came in, and I never had anybody in my life so concerned about me. When visitor hours were over, she asked if she could come back, and I said, no, it's so far over here. She seemed so hurt, and I explained to her that it wasn't that. I said, yes, you can come. Bring me some books when you come back. She said, do you need anything? I said, oh, yeah, some cigarette money. 
Yeah, you lay in the hospital at night. I think that's what really made me do some real introspective thinking because I could gather myself. I could slow down for the first time and decide where I was going, where I was coming from. I laid there and thought about my college coach and I laid there in the hospital for the first time in my life. I realized that I found the one thing I was looking for, show business. I decided that I was going all the way in this thing. I used to lie there and think and wait for visiting hours. It seemed like a coincidence that Lillian was always the last one to come back because most of the people I knew were show business people. So they could get there without worrying to get off from work. She came by the night and I was really impressed with the type of books and magazines and things she bought me. It was the magazines I had always wanted to help keep me on top of the news, but I wasn't able to afford a lifetime look, news look, Newsweek, Saturday Evening Post and Reader's Digest and two cartons of cigarettes. I never had two cartons of cigarettes in my life. And she opened the drawer and put them in there. She said, I'm going to leave some cigarette money for you too. And I asked her to bring some small change for the telephone. So we talked for a while. I never could find anything to say to her. She was a quiet and shy person. So we never talked too long. I tell her good night and tell her to go home before it was too late. When I reached in the drawer to get the cigarette out, I remember I had asked her to bring me some change for the telephone. But two rows of quarters, paper money, I counted it, $100. I laid there and couldn't believe this because this was about the same way my mom would act. If mom would have ever had any money, if I asked her for anything, she would overdo it and still feel like she hadn't done enough. I lay there and I couldn't believe this. I couldn't, I kind of had the feeling that all the hurt I thought I put mom through, maybe mom understood me better than I thought she did. Because the same thing this girl Lillian is doing for me would be the same thing my mother would do. I couldn't sleep that night for thinking about how mom never had money in her pockets until I got sick. And she'd always bring me dozen, a dozen oranges, tell the kids not to eat it. It was for Richard. She bring in a cup some soup. One good thing about being sick at my house, you got special food. So when I got out of the hospital on the three-day pass, I took Lil to a movie. Taking her to a movie was like offering somebody the whole world. She couldn't believe it. So bashful and shy. About that same time, Lou and I started dating pretty steady. Then again, not too much because she was so bashful. I really found myself lost for words of what to say. Then went to move in and crowds were so full and lines so long. I said, I've been here almost a year now and I guess it's time for me to get a raise. Still making $10 a night. I walked up and asked the boss for a raise and he wouldn't give it to me. So I quit. Had it pretty rough then, staying home, watching television. People you thought were a part of you, you see, you see them working every week and you're not. Then I had an idea. I heard someone say there was a nightclub called the Apex that was for sale. I called my good friend, Ira Murchison. He came by with his car, carried me out there, and I talked to this lady. I talked to her about, I talked to her and asked about a nightclub. She didn't know anything about owning the nightclub, but she told me she rented to me for $56 a night. I didn't have two pennies in my pocket. I told her, okay, by this time, it's January of 1959. 1959, weather had broken nights, so no snow on the ground. Nightclub was, was in Robbins, Illinois, about 15 to 20 miles outside of Chicago. I knew how I had to get into a nightclub where I could do the type of material I wanted to. As great as I felt at the Esquire, it was still was working to a big percentage of the Guitar Reds audience. I felt if I went out there and got my own club, I had respect as a performer and respect as an owner. I had more leeway, my club. I wanted to see the customers treated in a certain way. I knew if I made these customers, if I made these customers comfortable, I had the right atmosphere. I could get the type of comedy I wanted over. So I went out there and while I was there, this woman looked at Ira Murchison. She was an old woman, about 70 something years old. She said, you know, you've been overseas and you're going back again. She was absolutely correct. Ira had actually been to a track meet in Moscow and he had just returned to the States. I listened to this lady talk. Her name was Sally Wills. I heard her talking to Ira like I heard every, I heard women talking to my mother when she used to go. Where you go, baby? Come back here. Yeah, come back here. Let's go.
Then you can tell her now she's gone. Crystal. She looked at me and she said, you know, and then she looked at my mother and said, he's going to be a great man one day. I see a star right in the center of his head. Crystal. The woman said, uh-huh. Could you, could you go back a, a ways because you went out on us? Yeah, you skipped out uh, like uh, maybe like uh, two uh, two paragraphs before. Just go back two paragraphs because you went blank on us. We couldn't hear it. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I told her, okay, by this time it's January of 1959. Weather had broken ice, so no snow on the ground. Nightclub was in Robbins, Illinois, about 15 to 20 miles outside of Chicago. Chicago. I knew I had to get into a nightclub where I could do the type of material I wanted to do. As great as I felt at the Esquire, it was still was working to a big percentage of Guitar Red's audience. Mm -hmm. I felt if I went out there and got my own club, I'd have respect as a performer and respect as an owner. I'd have more leeway, my club. I wanted to see the customers oh, treated the same way. I knew if I made customers feel comfortable and had the right atmosphere, I could get the type of comedy I wanted over. So I went out there, and while I was there, this woman looked at Ear Murchison. She was an old woman, about 70-something years old, and she said, you know, you've been overseas, and you're actually going back again. She was absolutely correct. Ear had actually been to a track meet in Moscow and had just returned to the States. I listened to this lady talk. Her name was Sally Wales. I heard her talking to Ira like I heard women talk to my mother when she used to go and take me with her. I always used to hear my mother ask them, will Big Prez be back home? Will the kids be all right? These women were fortune tellers. I remember one time when I was about seven years old, one of these women looked at me and said, you know, you don't believe in me, do you? I didn't say anything because I didn't want to embarrass my mother, but I thought, when people go to a spiritualist reader or fortune teller, it's pure ignorance. This woman looked at me and she said, you know, and then she looked at my mother and said, he's going to be a great man one day. I see a star right in the center of his forehead. The woman said that when I was seven years old and I never forgot it. I never believed in them, but I never forgot that. I didn't think it was what she said. It was the way she looked when she said it and the reaction my mother had. Well, oh, okay, Krishna. So it's one o'clock. Start in thirty minutes. Yes, huh? Oh, okay. No, it was all right. I thought you went blank before you start talking again. So is that time, huh? Yes, yeah, that time. Yes. So you said we. I can go so, to public libraries and I can download this from public libraries and yeah, it'll so, be. Fine. Go ahead. Yep. And all you all you need is library card you can go on the dcpl app the library oh app, i have to get or, the library card first yeah you have to have a library card and i can get that on that same um place where you just told me to go at a dc public library um i believe you can get a temporary one on there if you sign up online okay so usually you have to go into the library to get the actual library card and that's the only way to get that book is no other options well, you can buy the book on Amazon if you okay. if you want to pay for it, but it's free on on um the DCPL app. Do you know how much it costs? Um, let me see one second. Oh no, I don't want to take you out your way because somebody else may have a question or something. And it, I guess I can check that. The app is on the iPad. All you have to do is go to the library app on your iPad and look for it. Oh, so go to the library app it's on app. the ipad and the book is on the ipad yeah, yeah. oh okay yeah. so you i don't have to download it or anything or go to the library is that what Do you, you guys have a library card no no i don't i don't have that you don't have a library card well you're gonna have to go to a library okay so the they'll, they'll give it to you right there on the spot if just go to a library, okay. And once I have that, then I can access this stuff you guys are talking about. And they'll you give a, you a temporary one on nine. Oh, okay, thank you guys so much for that. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. you. Temporary one online. 
Uh, okay, I can I can go to one. I believe it's one right here nearby on um, 8th Street Northeast, I believe. You can do it online. You can well, get I, a temporary you one. The line just yet. I'm still recovering from the strokes, so I'm not that okay. good at that just yet. <laughs> right, so you should be able to get a temporary library card online. You should be. Well, able to I'm going to just go to the library. I'll get... Um, my aide to just take me over there and try oh, to get it. Yeah. Call the text. Call the text. Call the text. That's all. Oh, call the text. That's true. Thank you for that. Yeah, call, thank call you. the text and they arrange for you to get a temporary right. card. Okay, it's thank you. Temporary the card. Okay, yeah, you I get a permanent that. one. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that, guys. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, now you know. Mm -hmm. I really, and I hope I can hold on to the thought. Now that's my thing. Uh, but I enjoyed that, um, the reading of this book. I really appreciate that. And, and like I said, you, you read very well and keep it going. It makes it interesting. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you so Thank much. You. you guys have any more questions for me? Um, do y'all want to still read the same book uh, next week until we finish it completely? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma I, yeah. I do. Yes. 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 Me too. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Crystal. Don't, don't course, change. No Thank you, Crystal. <laughs> okay, I won't change the book on you guys. I just want to make don't sure. Don't change the book because I'm looking at the cover. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, sounds good. Thank you, Crystal. Don't so know what's in the inside yet. <laughs> Mm. Mm. But we read some of what's on the inside, so you know a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah but I was learning about some Dick more. <laughs> Oh, there's nothing wrong with that. I love a good book. I love a good book. Oh. <laughs> well, I'll talk to you guys, you know, next week on Wednesday. We're going to read the same book. Okay. Love you, baby girl. Love you, Thank baby you. girl. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Thank you, sweetie. Okay. Have a good Don't day. Don't change the hairdo. Have a nice holiday. <laughs> Thank Look you. you want me. <laughs> She's just a baby. Look at that pretty girl. Thank you, honey. That's okay. She's a beautiful baby. Thank you. She's just a baby. I just appreciate Crystal for hosting today's Lunch Club. I enjoyed listening on as well. So. Um, again, we have our regular module at 1.30, so please take this time to use the restroom, get something to eat, get something to drink, you know, all the things, and then we'll be starting in about 20 minutes. All right, you guys? All right, thank okay. you. No problem. Hey, so, thank you. I have some homework. I got some homework to do. I got homework. Hey, Ronald, is one of those guys behind you, you? Yes. That, which one is you, that one? The one second to the right, second to the right. With the, with the neck tie on. <laughs> Say that again. The one with, with the neck tie on. The one that's sitting down. Yeah. Yeah, those are my those are my brothers. Oh, all of them. Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, they all have a similar uh, face and all have those healthy teeth. Well, Mama that's, said, Mama said, blood don't lie. That's right. How about that? Right. Uh huh. All those, but any sisters in the family? There was one sister, but she passed when she was twelve, back in '68. How about that? And mine, just the opposite. We had all girls and one, one, one boy that uh, didn't quite make it. He was a twin to a girl, and and she had him before she got to the hospital. So. Back then, they were having the babies at, at the house, so. <laughs> Way to greater success. Yeah, so that's that's great. All you guys look great. I'm just going to do that in my son at home. <clears throat> I couldn't make it to the hospital. I had him at home. <laughs> you too? Your family did too? Yeah, that's what no, happened. No, I did. Oh, you, 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 you were born at home. No, my son. I had my son at home. Oh, okay. And you said he made it, or I say I couldn't make it to the hospital. But but you had him though. Yeah, that that's great. Yeah, my mom had helped me. Oh, that's a blessing. Yeah, because back then I know my mother was having a, f a fish fry, and she always cooked dinners. Uh, she cooked them during the week and sold them to the people that worked in the neighborhood, the construction workers, 
that was before mm-hmm. they had those trucks that come around and serve them meals. But my mother used to fix food for them, and then on the weekend, that was me. That was, me. That was I. <laughs> yep, and then she would cook on the weekends, and it was one of those weekends. My mom. And, and uh, she had that big belly in front of her, and and she went in labor. She just went in the room, and I'm always watching my mom. So when she went in, and I I was went in behind her. They didn't even know I was standing there until my mother looked up and said, "Get my child out of here." <laughs> and I'm sitting there, and I I see um, somebody else, and I just started crying. I see my mother on the floor. I saw blood. I didn't know what was going on. I was, you know, young. Yeah, yeah. The twins came down, and um, yeah, but they managed to do something to her and um, save the other one. So we all girls, uh, ten girls. <laughs> and that's how I was when I had my son. At, um, when the paramedics came. I was like nervous to death. So my mom was going to cut the cord, but they made it in and they caught, cut the cord, the guy. And that I named was... my son after him. His name was Christopher. How about he was that? Young, young guy, and I named my son after him. That was I, don't a know, I don't know why, but I did. <laughs> Christopher was a, it was a blessing. He, was, he came in fighting. He came yeah. in. Yes. Because I was a young girl. Uh-huh. I was, I was like, I think 16, 17. Uh-huh. Um, so I, mean, I was scared, I was scared, uh, I was scared I was to death. Grown on my own. I can't mm-hmm. believe how calm my mother was. And I said, it's still something going on with her. She was just <clears throat> she was like, she was telling the paramedic people what to do, but they didn't know I was in the room. And my mother was the one that's spotted me or heard me crying or something <laughs> i had me a piece of chicken uh i'm sitting there on the chicken saying what's yeah. wrong <laughs> sure. hello miss walker hello how are you today well i'm just thinking about y'all mm-hmm. and those things i got to the hospital and what happened was with um because I guess my father was a doctor, but uh, when I, in the 30s, you didn't get sick on Wednesday because the doctors were all on the golf course at but, night. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, what they we, said, uh, and, uh, and yeah. Had, yeah, no, we didn't. <laughs> you had to call. That's true, though. To yeah, that's where you find them. That's right. That ain't true. They were all on the floor. Yes, it is. Mine was was there when I had my daughter. When I had my daughter, mine was there and I needed medication. They couldn't contact him because he was on the golf course. That's Mm. right. Wednesday, Mm -hmm. Wednesday, you don't get sick on Wednesday. Uh, (laughs) That's right. They be on the golf course. (laughs) If you got sick, you had to tell them, well, you got to hold on to tomorrow. That's right. (laughs) If it's oh, uh, I have I have a sister who is 19 years younger than me. We got the same parents, uh, but she was born on a Friday, on a Saturday night. And I know my father took my mother to the hospital, and that and left her just like we they used to do. And he came back and had office out, and finally yeah. called upstairs and said, "Bob, you got a sister." So then we tried to figure out what her name was. So we gave her, since it was just girls, I knew they weren't having any more because oh, right, we man. named her oh, after right. my father. So, mm-hmm. so uh, yeah, she, she's she, doing all right. So she's doing all right. But, That's good. So she got named after your dad, huh? Yeah. Yeah, because he knew he wasn't going to have no more and no boys was coming. So he got that's, his name. that's right. That, that yeah. was funny too, Ms. Walker, because my dad, he um wanted me to be a boy. He was yeah. going to name me Dennis, but I came a girl, so they had to name me Denise. <laughs> Close to Dennis. <laughs> he hated it. He hated it. He was so mad. Well, I was yeah. late getting on because my Grandsons, I counted up grandsons and granddaughters, great including great grandchildren, great grand. There are three 
granddaughters, including one great granddaughter, but it's uh -huh. five boys. Five, wow. five boys, grandsons and great grandsons. I Gee, said, wow. I said, well, the name will go on for a while because uh -huh. there's enough, enough yeah, of them. Even, even where there's a girl, there's a girl in in each group. And there's the one that one girl, she's ca carrying the name. And the latest yeah. one is just what seven, seven months old, six, six months old. And her mother gave her the her family name. So she'll have her family name. So the girls are carrying, but I did, you know what? Those women, those are in charge women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and those, those all boys, women think they're in charge. Yes, I oh, beg your pardon. Uh, <laughs> you, know, uh, you know that y'all do. You, we, you call them suggestions. I'm starting some stuff, Diane, and on purpose. Yes, you are. You know you be. Hey, hey, George, <laughs> George, George Morgan, didn't you tell us that you traced your family back to Quincy Adams? Quincy oh. Adams. Yeah. Who had the well, family? Well, I know you got you gonna have a lot of stuff to tell us on the Juneteenth celebration. I'm looking, <laughs> looking forward to that. Oh, I wish oh, I could, yeah, trace, I wish I could uh, trace back that far. Well, you know, that goes back as quite like the Quanda family goes back a long way too. They go back to George Washington. Yeah. They were they lived on that plant on that plantation, that's what it was called. The area was at that time. So Mount Vernon. Uh -huh. And they've done they've no, done a lot in the district of Columbia. Because one of them was a judge, uh, one of them is a doctor, uh, and one of them was um uh worked for the mayor. Uh, I think he worked for uh, he worked for Mayor Barry. And uh, mm. uh, several of them were um, uh. Were, um, uh, I'd love to get with Dr. Gates right. and have him do my do my genealogy. No, no, no. You, yes, yes, yes. I would. Your, uh, I'm uh, uh, sorry, Ms. Walker. Proceed. No, you have to do it because <laughs> you bring in the things that I don't know. You will right. write down the things yeah, I, that I, I, I don't know. I that I know, but he had, he had, he has all his hands in research and DNA and all that Every, stuff. I you can do that could, you but then you I can go to the archives and do people. the same thing, but you got to pay. Mm -hmm. But no, you don't have to pay. You, got, you can yes, do you, do, yes, you got to pay in the archives, babe. You got to pay it in that. No, no, no. Archive. You don't have to go to Ancestry and pay them. You I can, didn't say Ancestry. I said National Archives down near Tiffin, Pennsylvania Avenue, Northwest. Yes, I know about that. That's where my husband yes. works. And, but that's not that used to be free, but it's there. not no more. It's not. It's not there that you find all the records that you need. Exactly. That's why I went records. back to Gates because oh. he can get to all that stuff. But, <laughs> but you got to go to the same place. Gates. Mom. Yeah, I know. I know. But he. But I mean, down there in South Carolina, they probably got to look through the animal books. You know how they kept us separate. <laughs> No, with, let with me the tell live, you. With the livestock back. They, they, Ms. Walker, no, they uh, yeah, well, I tell you, you in Louisiana, too. They, they did. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Hey, Ron, I'm half of the Bureau. I don't know what the Pandora's box. No, you, you, that, you know, you could be right. I was with a friend who went to look for some uh, uh, mm. uh, people, and they turned the book around. And there they found names of black people. Remember, we we all ball up a piece of paper and throw it in the trash. Paper was very scarce, and putting it in book forms, black or white, was really special. Yeah, but this, they recorded and they record the city. In some places, they record the area the people live. We call a city now, they call it a county. If we live in Washington, D.C. Providence, it was the Providence during the 1920s. But no, we weren't a pop, we weren't uh, uh, we a- In Calvary County, my mother was born in Providence 
Calvary County, Maryland, 1928. Mm. <laughs> All right, mm -hmm. not the county. I got a birth certificate okay. on that job. Yeah, right. Mm. I, I and then, and then the uh, thing that too that when they that's how I got Enochima, my grandmother's name, because she on my mother's birth. I went for birth certificates. I got my mother's birth certificate, my grandmother, but now I'm trying to get Nancy Brown, mm. who's the original you know, slave you know, from uh, Africa, but it's hard. <laughs> You remember right, that's, that's why I was Dr. Thomas. Gates, Thelma. Huh? Thelma, you remember Dr. Gates, when? Uh, could, why y'all keep throwing up this picture? Thelma, you remember um when um remember uh Teresa had a lady come on from the library, and she was doing these um checking on hello. Uh, hello. Huh? She checked on what? Hello, everyone. My name is Belinda. I'm just joining the meeting. She was taking on our herds. Oh, I, I think she did you. So I think oh, okay. you asked her a question. And she yeah, would she look was back at it. She was, she, yeah, she was another product, but she was another product. But it was from the library. And she went back. She went back. She went back to uh you know, as far as you can get it. Does she have to be on her phone to talk? Can we can see her? So can she just mm. talk into and her she iPad? She has to be on her phone. Oh, okay. Hi, Belinda. Hi. So, hi. So, um, she well, we said it was free it, that we could we could it. do it. We could do it free. Yeah, but, no, I but now, but she said twenty-five years. But now, I think she was telling us it's. If the more okay. I got out, look, the more I got out was in 1984. Yeah. Right after my mother passed away and my father too. Me and my but brother was, went to the archives and that's the archives. They gave us a spreadsheet that took us back to almost where we knew of Edie Kima. But we want to go beyond Edie Kima. We want Nancy Brown. Oh, you need mm -hmm. this many dollars. You need X many dollars. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. I told this brother, that brother, who got the dollars, you know. They don't want to come forward, but I'm still going forward because I have to do it for my great grands. Yeah, she do. And, and my grandchildren, my grandchildren do it and all. And me and my that grandson behind me, oh, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. And when okay. we do it, we're gonna bring out one of the best because that's all I want is what is Nancy Brown's key, a cookbook. I pray that you got it all the I got Edith Kima's cookbook. Put it in a memoir. Recipes, but huh? Put it in your memoir. No. Oh, yeah. It's a secret right now. Oh, stop. <laughs> it's a secret. Violet, the, the Celtics won last night. Huh? Boston Celtics won last night, so it's not over yet. Yes, no, that's not. a terrible no, thing. No. For the Miami people to whoop them. <laughs> Miami <laughs> let them sneak in. Miami, Miami let them sneak yes. in this walk. That's such a good thing. Yeah. Yes, they did. They play again That's Thursday. Yes, play tomorrow you know, night. I'm going to be ready. I'm going to be awake for them, too. Nah, I'll, I'll be on, on Channel awake. 4. I'll be on Channel 4. No, no, no. They'll, they'll, be back. They'll, be, they'll be back in Miami. I will be. They're on 50. They're on 50. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nah. 51. The game is 51. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. a cable channel. No, yeah. nah, that's yeah. a all free, that's a free channel. TNT or oh, ESPN. Yeah, that's free. Yeah. 51. <laughs> that's I ain't heard of my TV. Oh, so. huh? it comes channel on your TV. It's TNT or ESPN. Period. Yeah. No, it's on the game. Well. Yeah, we, 51, we that's on oh, mine. 51 is judge, uh, is going what? Oh, Jerry Springer show? Oh, no one. No, well, that's, that's why I'm, I'm telling you, you it's TNT or ESPN Everything. is where it's coming on. That's that's true. Where, and, that, and that's where you will find it. One or other. Right. But okay. I do believe tomorrow, night, I believe the oh. TNT had it last night, so ESPN will probably have it tomorrow night. So now, tonight, what do we have? We you have, don't don't have nothing. Warriors, don't we have? Gotta, no, don't. no that, that's the Warriors are gone now. They to are my, much to my chagrin. Yes, the Warriors have been beaten. Now, what's the next? What? What comes? Somebody comes on tonight. 
No. No. It's nope. Okay. okay. You Nothing mean I can go to sleep? I can sleep through something and wake up at the end. <laughs> no, as with uh, Ronald, as um, with Thursday night game is on TNT also. Well, tomorrow night TNT, all right. That's, yeah. That works for me. I like listening to Barkley act a fool. <laughs> Who's Charles that? Barkley and Shaq. I always act, act a fool the pre game and the after game and the halftime. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Definitely. That's good stuff. That's real entertainment. It is. Yes. That's all right. So, yeah. <laughs> if you wake up before the game is over, and then you you know what the score is, but sometimes <laughs> when I wake up, it's so late that you can't even get the score. Oh, <laughs> if it, it be the next day, huh? Yeah, it's been a good day. I love you, Miss Walker. I just love you to death. <laughs> yes, we have to watch the game. Diane, you've been watching the game. Yeah, I don't. I don't watch the game. What? I I can't get into basketball. Oh, you're a football I lady. I'm lady. just a football lady. I, oh, I, me too. So honey, what did you? Uh, honey, hush. There it is. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, tell us about the tell us about love, the commanders. Tell no, us. no, no. Listen now. Yeah. Listen. Oh, you know what? Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Let, let's just hope they hurry Hello. up and sell them and move on. Melinda Cunningham. Yeah, they, 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 they talk, so I think they're really going to move on this time. Yes. Good evening. This is good evening. Commander of the homeless team. Hello, how are you? Hello. Who is, who is Hello. Hello. This is Mary Blakeney. Oh, Hello, hi, Miss Blakeney. Hi, Miss Mary. How are you? Oh, I'm good. Blatantly, oh my! We, we, we're talking a little bit of sports. Do you do you have a favorite team or something? Car breakdown will happen. Kansas City Chiefs. Uh oh, she went with the champs. She went with the champs, y'all. Okay. Philadelphia Eagles good too. Somebody oh, needs to turn. Afternoon, all. Good afternoon. I Sorry to on. interrupt your very interesting conversation about sport, but it is that hour. And before we get started, I wanted to get an idea. And we're actually doing module two this afternoon, but I I am I would like to do the lunch hour club because um Caroline, who normally does it on Thursdays, will be at the uh, DACL confirmation hearing for a uh, director Hines tomorrow. And so I am looking into the um, lunch hour and wanted to get an idea of what topic would be of interest. Is, are we gonna do music? We could do goodies and oldies music. We could do whatever it is that you all will see, would enjoy. The goal is to enjoy. So I wanna hear from you. Music. Any, any ideas what we should feature tomorrow? Lunch Music. hour, that is. Huh? Music. Music. Ah, got a good response. All <laughs> right. Are we taking, are we going to be taking what is called, um, of course, we're going to be using YouTube, um, but are request, we taking requests? Called, we, pardon me? These were requests. Uh huh. Can we do we're going to be taking requests. Huh? All types of music. Request, request. As okay. long as it's on YouTube and we could find it there, you can place your request okay. with your hands up, raised, of course, or yeah. in the chat, whatever way you want to communicate. Yeah, they come up with some good music. I, I just so listen. You like, you'd like to listen to some good music. Well, they, they, they come up, and all the members, they come up with some good, some good um music i i can't remember the names and stuff but they all can do it they <laughs> all right so i'll keep that in mind yeah uh, so we're all on we're all on that music tomorrow by request yes lunch hour good. Yeah. 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 Good. yes all right i'm looking forward to that yes. i'm going to be doing some dancing all right okay <laughs> my own music uh, i guess we're going to you know, 40, huh? music. Good music. afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. 
This is Brenda. This is Brenda. Good afternoon. This is Marie Franklin. I would like to request Gladys Knight and the Temptation. Tomorrow. 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 Yes, tomorrow. Tomorrow. You place it in the chat you can do it the way you just did it. Tomorrow at 12 o'clock. Come on and request and we'll have a party. Nominate. Okay. Bring, bring your own bottle. <laughs> you got one right here. <laughs> this is my uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, my bottle uh, right here. You have when you were young when you had rent um, rent parties to pay your rent. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma yes, ma'am. Yeah, those parties. Yes, you, you remember with the, the red liners lights. and free cakes? Um, <laughs> mm. rent party. Mm. Rent party. Can't waste right rent parties. Yeah. And when you could crash a party, it didn't get put out in it. it, it and the party still went on with no fighting. Yes, oh, yes, was, yes, yes, yes. Wasn't that awesome? Yes. <clears throat> I did a quite a few of that in my um, young adult life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yes. Lots of that. Okay, so we're going to go into this afternoon's. Um... What a good time. <laughs> Mm -hmm. to, I added some more information to it since we last covered it. So hopefully it will do something a little extra mm -hmm. for you. And so we're looking at module two. Okay. And I'd like everyone to mute their devices. Mm -hmm. I am not going to, uh, because I, you know, I don't want any distraction, any TVs in the background, phones ringing, things of that nature. So I appreciate if you do that. Okay, so this afternoon we're covering, but before we go into that, I'm going to go ahead and read the disclaimer. Um, the you need, you need to share your screen, on. Teresa. Pardon me? You need to share your screen. Oh, I haven't started sharing my screen. Thank okay. you, Alex. You see, I need I need help. I need help. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Is my screen visible? Yes, you're good now, Teresa. All right. So the disclaimer reads. The Wilderness Technology Alliance, DC, Senior iPad Program, its owners and presenters offer technical assistance, virtual health, well-being, information design for educational purposes only. You should not rely on the information in any application or topics made by the Wilderness Technology Alliance, including, but not limited to, mobile and device applications, any social media pages maintained by the Wilderness Technology Alliance DC iPad program, its owners or presenters as a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. All right, now that we're on the road now. So do we have any um, newcomers here today? Any newcomers? Yes, Teresa, we have about four. We have, whoa. Yes, we well, have I'd like to welcome today. them. Can I welcome them? All of our newcomers. Welcome, newcomers. <laughs> yep, let's welcome them. Welcome, Kim welcome, Lewis. welcome. Do we know who welcome they are? Welcome to the crew. Um, yes, we have um, Alonzo Liggins. Okay. We have Belinda Cunningham. Um, we have Latanya Pickard. And we have, um, those are the three that I see right now. Welcome aboard. Welcome, welcome y'all. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Enjoy, enjoy. Yes, welcome. Thank you so much for sharing that welcome. I'm sure they appreciate it, especially when the iPad is new to them and they've never done technology before. This is all so very important, as you know, right? You've been there. Yeah. You know, you know what's going on right now. So, so we'll just go through a few of the um, uh, housekeeping items. For those new seniors, this program provides you with one Apple iPad tablet on loan until you complete the program requirements. Also with that, you get a subscription to a wireless broadband internet, and you've already received your individual telephone training and tech support. Yeah, we have a tech support that you can call when between the hours of nine to four for any, any help that you may need with your new iPad. The iPad should remain as in your sole possession. Um, it may not be utilized by any other individual other than to provide you training. You must participate um, 
which I think you've already done, uh, the free one-on-one -on -one telephone training or a free one-on-one face-to-face -on -one -face at your local library. And of course, you must complete six free technical trainings virtually. All right. And after you've done that, then you, you've been in the program for about 90 days. The next thing you'll receive is an email um, uh, coming with this, uh, looking just like this, requesting that you complete um, the DC iPad program's midterm survey. The questions are basically just to get an idea of how the iPad is uh, making a difference in your life. This is what it looked like when it arrives in the mail. That is email. So make sure you check your email, uh, you know, on a regular basis, at least several times a week. Okay, as far as our library um, trainings, these are face-to-face, -face, especially for the newcomers. We have face-to-face, one-on-one -on -one library trainings. And our um, starting tomorrow, we have one at Northeast, 330 um, 7th Street, Northeast, from 1.30 to 4.30. And then next Tuesday, May 30th, at Petworth, 4200 Kansas Avenue, Northwest, 1.30 to 4.30. Wednesday, uh, May the 31st, Anacostia, 1800 Good Hope Road, Southeast, 12.30 to 3.30. And then on that last Thursday of next week, June the 1st, at Benin Road, 3935 Benin Road, uh, from 1.30 to 3.30. Because these um, trainings are um, best uh, at one-on-one, -on -one, one trainer per one um, participant, we highly recommend and we are su suggesting that you contact the help desk to schedule your um, time so you can have that one-on-one -on -one, face to face um, assistance. So you do that by contacting 202-800-6868, or you can email, if you're email savvy by then, um, library at waltech.org to reserve your time slot. All right. Again, um, for the new Teresa, um, we, we have Monday off. That's why we don't have a training on Monday. Monday is Memorial Day. There will be no classes um, on Monday. So please enjoy your weekends. Yeah, but we'll, we'll make that final announcement tomorrow just to let you know that. Thank you, Alex. Um, so, show, so in order for you to receive credit for this class, or if you wish to, um, you must um, show your screen name because we don't know who you are. Now, an event that you don't know how and you're showing as iPad space me or Zoom user, um, this is how you can change that. So if you're not seeing your first name and last name in the participant list, you will not receive credit for today's class. We cannot distinguish who you are if you show iPad or user, et cetera. So how do you solve that problem? Well, your Zoom toolbar looks almost like this little area up here. Sometimes it's at the top of your um, iPad or it could be at the bottom. You would look for the icon right here that looks like this, two tiny heads, and it says participant. You tap on that and then this drop down opens up. When this opens up, it actually lists all the participants that are currently in this meeting. And where would your name or what appears uh, could be you would be the first that would be shown here. And this first row would have user, it would either be iPad space me or Zoom user, and then of course the host and then the co-host and so on. And that's where from that, after you recognize that you would wanna tap on that, which says um, iPad space me or Zoom user and get the drop down that allows you to change your name and you follow the prompts there to do so. Now, because we have what? We have close to 63 participants right now. Just imagine that if someone new, especially someone you don't know how to raise their hand and they're waving and waving and waving and I'm not seeing and Alex is not seeing, we don't know, we can't help you. So how do you get our attention? Is you raise your hand virtually. And that helps to keep the meeting organized and avoid talking over each other. 
the host myself will likely ask you to raise your hand and you can find that raise hand button in the toolbar at the end of each um, at the end of this toolbar here it says more you're looking for where it says more three dots you tap on that this drop down opens up and then here this is where you raise your hand by tapping on that Okay, so today we're looking at um, battery and power of your iPad, buttons and connectors, speakers, cameras, and the microphone, Siri, and accessibility features. So for those of you who've been in this module, module many times, I've expanded on the accessibility features of the module since the last time. So you have in your possession the ninth generation iPad, and it's often referred to as an iPad 9 or iPad um, 10.2, depending. And this, this iPad was manufactured in 2021, so it's not that old. Um, all right. So when you open up, your, you, you've got your iPad, you're looking at it right now. Here, we're going to look at the buttons and connectors. We're going to look at the front camera. The all these different areas of the iPad. We're gonna be looking at that, and of course at the back. All right, so where is the power button? Of course, it's located right here. So if you're holding your iPad vertically, if you are with, your, with the home button at the very bottom, and the home button is located where you plug in your device to charge it. So if you were holding that vertically, then your power button would be the top right-hand corner to power on and off. So it says here, press and hold to turn your iPad on. And then it says, touch the power button to put the iPad into sleep or standby mode. When the iPad is on, touch the power button to turn the iPad from sleep or standby mode. You can touch and hold the power button for three to five seconds to power the device on when it's fully shut down. And if you feel a need to fully shut down the device, when it's on, you should touch and hold the power button for three seconds to get a red slider telling you to slide power off, slide, and you would slide it, it, it will come on, and then you would slide it from the right all the way to the left, and then the iPad will begin to shut down. So that's an extra step you go through to shut it down completely. All right, so the battery life of your iPad, the ninth generation, it's about an average about 10 hours and then it will need recharging again. So you can practically use your iPad all day long and then each night you plug it in, charge it during the night and then bang, the next day is fully charged again. Now, um, one thing I realized, iPads don't charge as fast as your um, smartphones. They really don't, they take longer. So it's Always best to plug it in at night, especially if you've been using it all day long and next morning it is fully charged. All right, so now we're gonna look at the front camera, which is uh, known as a nine pixel, megapixel camera that is capable of taking beautiful photos and it could capture 4K videos and even film in slow motion. The front facing camera is primarily designed for FaceTime and we're gonna look at time in a little while. And where is it located? Again, holding your iPad um, vertically with the, with the um, home button at the very bottom, then the, your front camera is going to be at the very top in the center of your iPad, at the very top, on the actual surface of the iPad, as shown here, somewhere here. Again, the power button, we, we covered that a little while ago. It's top right-hand corner right here. The volume button, yes. The physical buttons on, this, on the side of your device are on the main volume buttons. You can turn up the volume using the top button and turn down the volume using the very, the bottom. So you, if we go to the next slide, you'll see what I mean. Here we have, this would be your, top, this would be your bottom. So you would press this to volume up 
press this volume down. All right, here are your speakers. Where are they located? At, again, at the very bottom of your iPad. This is your port here where you plug in your iPad to charge. Well, if you look at the very bottom, you'll see those little tiny little dots here. These are your speakers, your two of them. Okay. All right, so let's explore that front camera and what it can do for you. The iPad has two cameras and um, there's one front and there's one back. So the front camera is primarily designed for FaceTime, okay? Where is it located? Again, at the very top of your screen, very little tiny dot. Now, if you wanted to take a selfie um, using your iPad, you would be using the front camera. And once you've taken that selfie of yourself, you then, it will then be stored in this app. Looks, has this multicolored looking. This is what, a photo gallery. Um, it's stored there and you just go there to retrieve it. Now, again, to take that photo, you're gonna be using this app, the camera. Once it's taken, it's then stored in this app, okay? The rear camera um, is located on the rear of the tablet. The rear camera is used specifically for videos because it can take up to 4K at 60 um, frames per second or even 1,080 um, pixels at 240 frames per second. And I don't expect you to understand this stuff, but it's here and I got to read it. So. Uh, giving you a much better resolution than the front camera. So which, which camera really gives you the best resolution? Your rear camera. That's the one you want to use to take family photos or whatever. So when you take a photo or a video of your iPad, it goes, where does it go? It goes straight to this app right here. And that's where you can retrieve it. So here are the steps basically when you want, would like to take a photo. It's, um, the photo is the standard mode that you can see when you open up the camera. You use the photo mode to take still photos or you can use the video ones and that, that option is there to video. Yes, you can make a video using your, using your iPad. So what do you do? You look for this icon on your iPad. It looks like a camera, you tap on it and then it, as it says here, tap this on the home screen or swipe left on the lock screen to open up the camera in photo mode. Tap the shutter button or press either the volume button. Yes, you can do that too to take a photo. So there's more than one way of taking a photo. You don't always have to find this app to do so. Now, if you need a flash, once you've opened up the camera, you look for this lightning bolt um, symbol and you can. Um, you can um, take your photo. You can also set the timer. If you wanted to take like a group photo, you can use the timer, set how many seconds, three or 10 seconds, step away in your group, and then in within three or depending on what choice you, you, you um, took, it will then take that photo of the group. Okay, so. Now we're going to look at how does one take a selfie, okay? Very simple, very brief video. Here's a quick little video on how to take a selfie picture. Can you hear the volume? Is the volume? It's a little low, Teresa. So I need to turn it up. All right, let's see if I can turn up the volume here. It's always, usually it's with the backwards camera. So that's why I can see all around the room but I got to turn it around so it can be in the selfie mode. So I'm going to tap the little button up here that turns the camera around. So now it's got the front camera activated and I'm going to center my face on there nice and good. Now make sure when you do it, your top of your head is near the top of the screen. You don't want to be taking a selfie like this. You know, you want to kind of get things right and look right at the camera when you press the little shutter button over here. So one, two, three, nice smile, click. There I am. And there's my nice little selfie. And that's how to take a selfie on an iPad. Okay. All right. Now we're going to look at the microphone. 
The rear microphone is located on the back of the device. The speakers are located at the bottom of the device. If your microphone is not working, perhaps you need to turn on Apple's access to the microphone by going into settings and then going to privacy and then into microphones. You will see the application that have requested access to the iPad microphone. You need to toggle, tap the toggle to turn on the app's microphone access. All right, let's look at another um, feature on this iPad. Uh, the active touch ID. The home button also has a fingerprint sensor on it. Once you have touch ID set up on your iPad, you can use a finger to do many things such as opening the iPad from the lock screen without typing your passcode and verifying that you want to buy something in the app store. So uh, what do I recommend where this is concerned? If you live alone, and you feel comfortable that you can trust, you don't have anyone popping in and out who use your iPad, I wouldn't recommend that you use this method um, because one day, what if your fingers are not working? What happens? You're locked out of your iPad. So if you can, stay away from using this feature, if you can, okay? All right, so the iPad's home button is a small circular button at the bottom of the iPad. It's also the only button on the face of the tablet. The most important use of the home button is to take you to the home screen, which houses all of your app icons. If you're inside a particular app, you can hit the home button to exit the app, revealing the home screen. But there are many other iPad features that you activate using the home button. All right, so the home button is at the very bottom here. It's not that vis much visible here, but it's located. It's the only button, the only one on the, flat, on the surface of the iPad, okay? You could also um, activate Siri, Siri by pressing the home button for several seconds until you hear two beats. A display of multicolored lines will flash on the bottom of the screen, indicating that Siri is ready to listen to your command. And we will talk about Siri in a little while. So again, this is your home button here, the only button on the surface of the iPad, okay? You can return to the home screen using the home button. You can press and hold to an Able Siri. You can press it twice while locked to access Apple Pay. You can press it twice while unlocked to open multitasking screen. You can press the home button and the power button simultaneously to take a screenshot. Yes, it really does work. So let's look at some of the multitasking features. The iPad has ways to open apps that are much quicker than hunting through page after page of icons searching for the right one. The fastest way to get back to an app you recently used is to launch the multitasking screen by what? Double clicking the home button. All right. So again, the only button on the surface of your iPad right here is where your home button is located. Now, as shown here, I want to, I've double clicked because I want to go back to a, a, a website I looked at previously. Do I now go into the browser? And, no, I can simply double tap and it'll show me all the different apps that I opened that I never closed. And all I simply do is tap on the one that I'd like to. If I wanted to go back to YouTube, Here's YouTube here. This is a screenshot of mine. If I wanted to go to Safari, it's right here. Various, these are all the apps that I have currently open on my iPad because I use them frequently. All right. Here's another feature of multitasking, using two apps at the same time. Or watch a video while doing something else. But the iPad multitasking between two apps is a useful and realistic way to work. So I could be reading my email and watching a video both at the same time on my iPad, okay? And this is how you, for example, on your iPad, there's three little tiny dots, usually at the very top of your screen, right about here. 
if you tap that, it will give you a breakdown. If you could split your screen in two, or you can slide it. If you were in split view and you want to just have one screen, you could slide it over and so forth, or you can close it. Okay, so the three multitask multitasking modes include with included with your iPad um, is slide over, which lets you quickly open a second page app without leaving the one you're currently using. The not another is the split view, which enables you to run two apps at the same time. And then the third is known as picture in a picture, which lets you watch a video while you're still doing other things. Now we're going to look at Siri, a personal assistant. Really fascinating feature of the iPad. So we're going to watch a brief video on Siri and how it works. But before we go that, let me just say, Siri, what is the purpose, the main purpose of Siri? It is a user's spoken question by speaking with back. Okay, Siri responds to users' spoken questions by speaking back to them through the device speaker and presenting relevant information on the home screen from certain apps such as the web or the calendar. Siri is an excellent personal assistant and it powers range, powers range from keeping you more organized to helping you figure out where you want to go and give you directions to how to get there. So let's look at the uh, brief video on Siri and how it's set up. Hey Siri, do you like Amazon Alexa? I'm a big fan of good listeners and helpful beings. Hey, have you ever heard of Siri? My guess is yes especially if you're watching this video, but in case you don't know, Siri is a tool to control your iPhone or iPad with your voice. I wasn't much of a Siri fan when Apple first released this feature, but I find I use Siri more and more for a whole bunch of different things. If you're tired of having to type stuff on a little iPhone screen and you'd like to learn how to control your iPhone by speaking to Siri, then stick around. This short video is for you. Hi, my name is Rich. If this is the first time you visited this channel, then welcome. We're glad you're here. Over the last two years, I've been producing simple to follow videos for seniors and beginners on how to use their iPhone and iPad. And today, we're going to take a look at Apple's voice activated assistant, Siri. And before I get into this, I know that this is not for everyone. My wife is not a fan. She says Siri ignores her or doesn't respond correctly. I have that happen every once in a while, too. But there are some basic ways to use Siri that'll make using your iPhone way easier. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up Siri and choose a Siri voice, how to make a phone call using Siri, how to create a reminder using Siri, how to send a text using Siri, how to check the weather using Siri, because you always need to know what the weather is, how to ask Siri for directions, and how to ask Siri for really just about anything. Let's get started. All right, the first thing I want to talk to you about is how to set up Siri and choose a Siri voice. And that's kind of important to do that. You simply go into settings, tap on that, scroll down till you get to Siri and search, tap on that, and make sure you have listen for Hey Siri turned on. Um, if you don't have that turned on, she won't listen or hear you and you won't get any kind of response. And when you turn it on for the first time, Siri will ask you a number of questions and you'll answer those so that Siri can get used to your voice and understand what you're asking. You can also uh, turn on press side button for Siri. That way, if you don't want to use the trigger phrase, hey Siri, and by the way, you do have to use that. If you don't say that, uh, Siri will not pop up. So you can't say, Siri, what time is it? You have to use the trigger phrase. But if you don't want to do that, you can just use the side button on your phone and press that and Siri will pop up and you can ask a question. You can also choose the voice that you want to listen to. If you choose Siri voice right here, you can choose American, Australian, British, Indian, Irish, or South African. So if you choose British. I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. Hi, I'm Siri. 
Choose the voice you'd like me to use. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. I think I like that voice best. And that's how you set up and turn on Siri and choose Siri's voice. So the next thing I want to talk to you about is how to make a phone call using Siri. You don't have to tap on the phone. You don't have to go into your contacts. You can just simply ask Siri to make a call. Now, the one thing you do need to know is that the phone number that you're asking Siri to call is in your contacts. That's if you use, you ask Siri to call someone by name. Otherwise, you can just tell Siri the phone number and ask her to call. So here's how that works. Hey, Siri, call Rhonda. Calling Rhonda Bolin, mobile. Hey, just testing out Siri. Thanks for picking up. All right, bye. And that's how you use Siri to make a phone call. Pretty simple. So I use Siri a lot to set up reminders for me. And it's very simple. Um, the reminders app is where I keep track of grocery lists and things that I need to do. And sometimes I don't want to go into the reminders app and actually type out um, whatever it is that I'm, I'm needing to remember, but I can just ask Siri to do it. And here's how you do that. Hey Siri, remind me to buy milk tomorrow. Okay, your reminder is set for tomorrow. Then if you go into reminders, you'll see buy milk is set for tomorrow. And that's it. That's how you ask Siri to remind you to do something. You can also ask Siri to send a text message for you if you don't really want to type out a text message. Sometimes typing on the iPhone for me is not the easiest thing. That keyboard is kind of little on there. I'm used to it and I can do it. But you don't have to do that. You can just ask Siri to text someone. And this is how it works. Hey, Siri, text Lindsay. What do you want to say? I hope you're having a good day, exclamation point. Your message to Lindsay says, I hope you're having a good day. Ready to send it? Send. Okay, it's sent. And that's it. That's how easy it is to have Siri send a text message for you. The next thing I want to show you is how to ask Siri about the weather. You know, you've got a weather app on your phone, but sometimes you're not near your phone um, or you don't want to open the weather app. So you can just ask Siri and this is how it works. Hey Siri, what's the weather today? It's currently clear and 57 degrees. Expect mostly cloudy skies starting in the morning. Today's high will be 72 degrees and the low will be 57. And that's it. That is really simple. You didn't have to go into the app or anything. You just ask Siri what the weather is going to be today. You can also ask Siri for directions and you can ask for directions to someone who's listed in your contacts or even if they're not listed in your contacts, you can ask for directions. And this is how you do it. Hey Siri, give me directions to Home Depot. One option I found is the Home Depot on Retail Drive in Wake Forest. Is that the one you want? Yes. Getting directions to the Home Depot. And that's all you have to do to get directions using Siri. Really, really simple. You know, the last thing I want to show you is really more humorous than anything else, but you can really ask Siri any question that you want and she'll be able to answer it for you. Uh, for example, hey Siri, do you like the Cincinnati Bengals? I'm sure the Bengals are very good, but I'm not really one to judge. Hey Siri, do you like the Los Angeles Rams? I suppose so. I don't really have an opinion. Hey Siri, when was Lucille Ball born? Lucille Ball was born August 6, 1911. Hey Siri, do you watch YouTube videos? Hmm, I don't have an answer for that. Is there something else I can help with? No, thanks. Okay. So as you can see, you can ask Siri just about anything, like math questions. Hey Siri, what is 547 times 12? 547 times 12 is 6,564. Once you get the hang of using Siri, you'll find out just how useful she can be. 
And it's really handy to be able to just ask Siri something without having to go on your phone and, you know, type something out. Siri can do way more than I just covered, but my goal in this video was to just show you the basics and maybe get you interested in using Siri. Let me know in the comments below if you use Siri and if Siri works for you. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, so that's what Siri can do for you as your personal assistant. Hey Siri, do you like Amazon Alexa? Hold on, let me get this. I'm a big fan. All right, let me get myself back to the slides. Thank you. Went too far. I need to uh, put on the slide share again. Okay. All right. So looking at it, how do we get Siri started to set it up? You must first go to settings because it needs to recognize your voice. And after you're in settings, you tap, you look for Siri and search, listen to the all of the steps that they're asking you to do because it needs to recognize to know your voice. So when you say, hey, Siri, it responds. Okay, so now we're going to look at some accessibility features. All right, so this in settings, we're in settings here, and I'm in the actual accessibility um, section of it. And notice the various types that uh, are listed here. We've got voice over, zoom, over or text, display and text size, motion, spoken content, and audio description. So there are many features here that could be a benefit to you if you, um, you know, need a little help in using your iPad. The first one we're going to look at is the assistive touch. This is if the home button is damaged and no longer working on your device, you can turn this option on to enable a virtual one. You will go to the accessibility menu in settings, touch tap, and then turn on assistive touch option. A white dot will appear and then you tap this to access popular options such as your home button. So this is what they're talking about, this white dot here. All right, so to get started with the accessibility features on your iPad, um, let's, we're gonna look at um, how it can support you. It can support your vision, physical and modal hearing and learning needs. So let's learn how to configure these features and set up the shortcuts for easy access. Notice here on my screen, um, these are the various ones that are available. As you can see here, there are a whole host of them right here. So now we're going to- You can customize accessibility settings on an app-by-app -app basis to work best for you. Here's how. In your accessibility settings, scroll down and tap per app settings. Tap add app. Here's an app you'd like to customize. Now, tap the app you just added in the app customization list. Then, customize the app settings to work best for you. You can adjust settings like text size, reduce motion, increase contrast, and more. The next time you open the app, you'll see the changes you've made. Customize settings app by app. Okay, that was really fast. So basically what she said, you you will need to customize each app. Um, for example, she customized, she showed how to do the mail app. You can do any app that has those uh, accessibility features. You need to go into the app and then go into the access. Portion Teresa, of your volume went down. Volume, you're not hearing me? Yeah, I can hear you now. You were oh. very low. Oh, wow. All you're right. You're so good. That, yep. Thank you, Brenda. That was a mini video on how one, how does one begin to customize you, the apps that has the accessibility feature. Okay. All right. So the first one we're going to look at is, um, well, we're going to look at voiceover. We're going to look at Zoom, and then we're going to look at switch control. You can turn on many of these accessibility features away when you first set up your iPad. And many of you may have already done so. Um, you can turn on voice over by triple 
clicking the home button on the iPad with the home button or triple click the top button. And then there's Zoom where you can double tap the screen with three fingers. You can turn on switch control as well. So let's look at some. So with VoiceOver, VoiceOver is a gesture-based screen reader. You can use iPad even if you can't see the screen. Yeah, if you have limited vision or no vision at all, you can use VoiceOver. It gives audible descriptions of what's on your screen, from your battery level to who's calling to which app your finger is on. You can also adjust the speaking rate and pitch to suit your needs. So when you, when you touch the screen or drag your finger over it, VoiceOver speaks the name of the item your finger is on, including the icons and text. To interact with the item, the icon, I mean the item, such as a button or link, or to navigate to another item, you can use the voice over gestures. And we're going to look at that. When you go to a new screen, the voice over plays a sound, then selects and speaks the name of the first item on the screen, typically in the top left corner. Voice over tells you when the display changes to landscape or portrait orientation. When the screen becomes dimmed or locked and what, what's active on the lock screen when you wake your iPad. All right, so how do you turn on voice over in settings? Here it is, briefly. Mm -hmm. Teresa, we can't hear you. You can't hear it? VoiceOver no. is a useful tool on okay, iPads for students who are blind or have low vision. What are you saying, Brenda? You're not we couldn't able... hear it first, but we hear you now. Yes. We hear it now. Okay. VoiceOver describes what is happening on your iPad screen. To enable VoiceOver, go to your iPad settings, select accessibility, select VoiceOver, and turn VoiceOver on. Settings, landscape. Once VoiceOver is enabled, you can touch or drag your finger around the screen and VoiceOver tells you what is there. Tap a button to hear a description, then double tap to select. Because VoiceOver is integrated in iOS, it works with built-in and third-party apps. Assessment class and development organization folder. Reminders, Google K, Classroom. So that's basically how you get VoiceOver um, started. All right, so now we're gonna look at some of those gestures. All right, so you're using VoiceOver and the action, as you can see, we have the action on this side and the actual gesture to get it going. If you wanna select, it will select and speak an item. You simply tap or touch the item with your finger. If you wanna select the next item, you will swipe right. If you want to select the previous item, you swipe left. To speak the entire screen from the selected item, you two finger swipe down and pause or continue speaking, two finger tap. To speak additional information such as the position within a list or whether the text is selected, you do a three finger tap. So these are the gestures um, if you want to learn how to use the, your fingers um, to get voice over going for you, okay? All right, here's some more. We've got um, on the action on the left and then the gestures on the right. To select the last item on the screen, you four finger tap near the bottom of the screen. To speak the entire screen from the top, two finger swipe up. Select the previous item, swipe left. Move into a group of items, two finger swipe 
fright move out of a group of items to swing two finger swipe left and select the first item on the screen. Again, I've got it up. Four finger tap near the top of the screen. Here's some more. Scroll on one page, three finger swipe down, scroll down one page, three finger swipe up, scroll left one page, three finger swipe right, scroll right, right one page, three finger swipe left. All right, so how does one set up this voiceover? Well, the first thing you need to do is to go to settings. This is what your settings app look like right here. You tap on that. Once you're in there, you can enter into the search on the top left-hand corner of the settings accessibility. And then once you're in there, you look for voiceover. And it says turn voiceover on. You tap the voiceover practice and then double tap to start. Practice the following, and these are the gestures we just went over. When you finish practicing, tap down and then double tap to exit. All right, so your iPad does um, offers another feature. It's called spoken content on the iPad. Your iPad can read selected text or the whole screen and give you feedback and text corrections with spoken content. Yes, it can. All right, for those of us with low vision, those of, you know, again, voiceover is intuitively designed gesture-based screen reader that enables people with low vision or total blindness to fully access the iPad, okay? Zoom on, zoom in on the iPad. In many apps, you can zoom in or out on specific items. For example, you can double tap or pinch to look closer in photos or expand web page columns in Safari. You can also use the zoom feature to magnify the screen no matter what you're doing. You can magnify the entire screen, which is known as full screen zoom. You can magnify part of the screen with a resizable lens, which is known as window zoom, or you can magnify a portion of the screen that sit, stays in one place, and that is known as a pinch zoom. And you can use zoom together with voiceover. All right, so you're in accessibility shortcuts, and here are some of the options you have. You can increase your volume, your contrast, magnify voiceover zoom. To set up Zoom, you would need to go to settings again and in settings into accessibility and then look for Zoom and then follow the, the prompts there. All right, so using Zoom, you can double tap the screen with three fingers or use the accessibility shortcuts to turn on Zoom. And here's some of the things that you these are again um, you can choose pinch zoom resize it the lens then you could drag any of the of the wrong handles to appear there are different things you can do in zoom here all right to use a zoom controller you do the following of course you show show the zoom menu tap the controller zoom in or out double tap the controller or pan meaning it moving it around you drag the controller. All right, now we're going to look at how to make the font size larger on your iPad for low vision or visually impaired. So are you visually impaired or do you have low vision? No need to struggle to see the text. There, let's look at what this video is showing and how. Hey everyone, Mike Mulligan here. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am a certified orientation and mobility specialist. And today I'm gonna to be talking about an easy and quick way to enlarge the font on either an iPhone or an iPad. 
So this can be really helpful for somebody who's visually impaired or low vision and benefits from having larger print. So I'm going to give you a quick introduction on how to access this. It's quick and easy. It uh, doesn't require any downloads of apps or anything. Um, it's already built into the iPhone and iPad through their accessibility features. So I'm going to give you a quick demonstration here and show you just how it works. Okay, so let's get into a demonstration here. So in front of me, I have an iPhone X, um, and this is going to be what I'm going to be using for the demonstration. Uh, but enlarging the font can be done on any iPhone or iPad. Uh, this is just what happened, what I happen to have. Um, so there are two different ways to enlarge the font, and I'm going to explain why there are two different ways in just a second, but I'll show you both of those ways um, in this demonstration. So first thing is I want to point out that when you enlarge the font, there is really a few applications that this works in. So it doesn't enlarge the font with every word on the phone, but it works with the mail app, it works with contacts, it works with calendar, phone, um, notes and other apps that support dynamic type. So the app has to have that support function for this um, enlarging of the font to work. So now I'm gonna go into the first way to enlarge the font. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to settings. So you find the settings app, you tap that. And then I am looking for where it says display and brightness. So once I find display and brightness, I'm gonna tap that. And there's a few different options here with some pretty cool features, um, but I'm going to be looking for the one that says text size. So I'm going to tap text size. And now at the bottom of this screen, there is a little uh, toolbar or slider where there's a white circle. And if you tap that, you can slide it right to make the font bigger or swipe, swipe it left to make the font smaller. So to the right is larger, to the left is smaller. So I'm going to put it all the way to the largest and back out and go to a text message. So now my text message text uh, is much larger than it was before. But for some people, that still might not be large enough. So Apple knew this, so they added another function or a way of enlarging the font even more. So I'm going to go back to my home screen, tap settings, back out of this one. And now I'm going to look for the accessibility tab. So once I find that, I'm going to tap that. And now I'm looking for the display and text size under the vision accessibility features category. So I'll tap that. And now that I've tapped that, I'm going to be looking for where it says larger text. So once I find that, tap larger text. And now, again, there's another scroll bar at the bottom that you can swipe left and right. But the first thing you're going to want to do is toggle this on. So normally it's not toggled on. So to toggle it on, you tap that, turns green, and now you can use the scroller. And look how big that gets. So it's much bigger than the normal text size increase. Um, so if you go to the accessibility features, you can really uh, add some size to uh, what you're doing. But as you can tell here on the home screen, the app text names are still the same size, so it doesn't change that. But if I open the text message, uh, it's quite big. So this is really a good way um, at least for some of the apps on the phone uh, to get the text larger and make it a little bit easier to read if you benefit from large print. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, so that's just two ways of easily uh, enlarging the print. And I'd recommend just finding what works for you, uh, what fits your need, um, and just try it out and see uh, if that'll work for you. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this video was helpful on learning how to enlarge the fonts on either an iPhone or an iPad. And thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Okay. It seems to why I can't leak. Get out of here. All right. So now we've learned how to um, increase the font size for reading, for easier reading. And you let's go back into slide slow new so you could see basically how you actually so in settings you want to go to settings and then from there especially it says if you have color blindness or auto vision challenge you can customize the display settings to make the screen easier to see and to do so you go into settings and then into accessibility and follow the prompts in there. Once you're in there, 
Here are your options to display and text size. You can hover, display it, motion. These are the options that are available. Here's once you're in it, this is what you see. You can, um, all of the bold text, you can in, make the text appear larger. You can de increase and decrease uh, the contrast. You can differentiate without color. This replaces the user's interface item that relies slowly on color to convey information with alternatives. This is what happens. Now to access or to make changes in there to configure it, you must go again to settings, accessibility, and then into display and text size. Okay, so there's some of the things that you can do. Auto brightness, you can adjust the screen brightness for light conditions using the built-in ambient light sensor. You can use the white points. This is um, setting reduces the intensity of bright colors. All right, now you want to adjust the size when you're you're using a certain app. For example, if you were to go to Safari and you're surfing the internet and the text or the font there is too small for your eyes, you can go you can actually open up your control center in that app and then select the larger A. It says if you don't see it, then go to the settings, go to the control center, then choose the text size and drag the slider up or down to increase or decrease the text size. You can use this feature to increase your font size right here. And this is what it looks like once you're in here. Turn it on, larger text on, and so forth. Um, I took another screenshot of it here. These are all the these are the options that are available. All right. So you know, once you if it's on, it'll move instead of change to green and white instead of being grayed out. All right. In the accessibility feature in the motor in the physical and motor section of it, here are some of your options here for touching, switch control, so forth. You, you have your voice control turned on. In the Apple TV remote, pointer, control, keyboard. These are some of the uh, features that are available. Okay, hearing, sound recognition, and so forth. And some more. Magnifier. So that brings us to the end of the um, accessibility features and basically the end of today's module. Yep, right around the right time. So um, you can exit the, um, the class at this time, or you could stay on and um, listen to some of the questions that may be relative to what you are concerned about, learn from each other. And so we're now going to go into the Q&A section of the class. And before we do that, again, I just want to remind those of you who would like to have a one-on-one -on -one face to face library visit, you need to call 202-800-6863 um, or email library at wildtech.org to reserve your call because it is one-on-one -on -one face to face. And for our next four library sessions, we have one tomorrow. Uh, at Northeast, and then none on Monday because Monday is um, Memorial Bank holiday. But on Tuesday, we have one at Petworth, and that one is from 1.30 to 4.30. Wednesday, Anacostia, Good Hope Road Southeast, 12.30 to 3.30. And then Thursday, um, June the 1st, at Benham Road at 1.30 to 4.30. That's where we are. And lecture, you can leave unless you have questions. All right, so we're now open for questions. Let's look and see if we have any raised anything in the chat. Yes, found out the double tap two weeks ago. Somebody just said that. Okay, so let's look and see what we have here as far as hands raised. We've got Latoya Picard. You can unmute. I'll ask you to unmute and ask your question and then followed by Adele. 
I see your hand is raised, Adele and Barbara Walker on mute. So we can, so we'll begin with LaToya. Go ahead, LaToya. No, I'm just raising my hand to say hi because I'm letting you know your name is there. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm waiting. Okay. Hello, LaToya. How you doing? Thanks for checking in. And okay. again, welcome. Okay. Welcome to Hi. Thank you, my dear. Our next hand raised is coming from Adele. Go ahead, Adele. Hi, uh, this is Adele. I just want to ask about the subject of volume up and down. Is there a way that you can turn the volume off? Completely? Excuse um, me? You mean completely? You, is that, you have a phone ringing, Adele? Cause I'm- Yeah, I'm, uh, that's, that's, that's one of the reasons why. <laughs> Hi, I have to call you back. Yeah, you mean of a phone or the iPad? Which one? Right. Because you can call the volume up. You, yes, you can call you. You just press that low button all the way, and it powers it the volume off. If you, you can it until the volume, you can't take so you it can, anymore. You can take the volume up, down, or completely off. <laughs> and that the was volume. one of the reasons why I would need it now because the phone rang at that particular time. Right. So what? how do you do that? You take your finger, you look for the volume down button, which would be the button. Yes. Finger on it until basically, and then there's no more volume. So it will take the volume all the way off if you go down. Yeah. It'll go all the way down. You can be hearing okay. Uh, all right. Thank it? you. Thank Welcome, you. Adele. Nice all afternoon. Right. Uh, we have Barbara. Go ahead, Barbara. Good afternoon. Uh, in the display, in making larger and smaller, can the arrow uh, be made larger and the color change? When we what arrow? The, the point. The point. <laughs> the, you mean this mouse? You're talking yeah, about the, the mouse. mouse? Yeah, the mouse. Can, can this the mouse well you see on on your ipad um you really when you tap on it you really don't have a mouse pointer um, so I, I i don't know is that the arrow you're speaking of barbara i guess so you know you well, know give an example, give an example okay. of something is she speaking of a cursor it must be that she's speaking of. Yeah. So um, I would let let me check and see if there the cursor does have a feature to you want to enlarge it. Is that what you'd like yes. to do? Yes. And right now mine is small and black. Uh -huh. And when you what? are pointing, yeah. When you are using it, it's fine, but when I'm using it. It gives the eyes much to look for. Mm, mm, mm. And okay. okay, I'm actually going to be sharing the screen right now. Um, in the iPad, and I'm going to go in there now. Okay. Look, um, I'm now going to go into settings. Okay. And I'm going to put in there, because um, I've never had this question before. I never even given thought to it before. So let's find out. So let's see. You are Hello. Okay, so there, I'm in accessibility now. This is a cursor of color. Lighting cursor, large cursor. Let's go there, because you want okay. a larger rock. So I'm going to tap on that. And let's see. All right. So it says here, here, here are the options here. You could um, let's look at the, uh, the options for the cursor. Um, scanning, loop, repeats, behavior. Let's see. If we're looking for color, right? And size. Yeah, and, uh, and size. All right. So let's see. Um, As audio. Uh, 
um, refine, precise. Uh, a single mode allows you to make one vertical or one horizontal. This may be larger. Refine allows you to refine your target in each direction and a second scan in the range. So that's not going to help. Let's go back. Um, focus on the tap. And that one certainly doesn't. Large cursor. Commands, activities, typing, quick settings. All commands, touch gestures, keyboard, handwriting, rails, it's over commands. Not seeing anything here, even though it says here. You, for large cursor, you want to go to accessibility and then voice over or switch control. Hmm. Anybody have any suggestions on this one? Because I am not seeing any of the options here. To allow that. Large cursor, right? It says they go to accessibility, it says to go to voice over. So we're going to go to accessibility, bring voice over, right? Over here, and then go, go to quick settings, quick settings. And it says here, right. Large, here it is, large cursor. Large I just cursor. Tapped, yeah, there it is. I just tapped on it. So that's what you would have to do, Barbara. Okay. You have to go to uh, first, if you notice to the left of my iPad right now, which is cursor color. That's okay. In, and then from there, you go to voice over. And then from voice over, you look to see how to enlarge this large cursor. Can you see it? Yes, I see what you're talking about. Sounds like a, a fun activity for the afternoon. Yeah, and if, and if you can access call the help desk and they'll help you set it up. Okay, thank you. Welcome, Barbara. All thank right. you, have a good Thank to you. Geraldine Smith, go ahead, Geraldine, unmute. Okay. Um, well, I didn't have a question. I had just had a comment to say that I uh, uh, enjoyed the presentation as usual. But, you know, uh, my comment is no matter how, how many times I go over this with you in the class, there's still stuff I forget each time. And I don't yeah. know I forget it until you go over it again. Yes. So, yeah. You're not the only one. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm not the only one. No, you know. No, no, no you're not. <laughs> oh, yeah. Welcome oh, to the crowd. Okay. Today, okay. Is the show is slipping. Just times, how do we read? Go. We have to keep How long do you want to give in? The one time? It's more what? Okay. Let me take this off. The more you get, you know, you will then begin to be able to use the various features. And, 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 if, and let's say you can't, settings is a place to go. Do it, look at all the various options and read and find out what is it that you can do to customize your iPad to your needs. Does that make sense, Geraldine? Yes. Yes, yes, it does. Yes. It's it's a user thing. You've got to go in there and you have to do the drilling down. Right. Yeah. You have to do it. Like, like somebody says, that's a nice afternoon activity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -oh. That said that. <laughs> and, uh -oh. and Gerald, I don't know how new you are in the class, but we've got um, folks in this class from two years ago. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, we still have them. They still attend classes. Well, I hope I'm in two years from now. You and me both. <laughs> yeah. I've been in there for a while. Each time yeah. I learn something different. Learn something new. Uh -huh, That's uh -huh. right. Uh -huh. <laughs> how to make them louder, how to make things 
softer because right. I, yes I do the uh, reading and you, so you don't you know you have to adjust the hearing I you know I'm getting smart I'm getting books that I can listen to that, okay so, so you have to adjust the the uh, sound according to what your ears can take so okay. yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's why I needed a, a larger cursor when we talk, when I go to look at, up things with this. So, we'll do. I thank I you learned, very much. That means she learned something new this afternoon. Yes, the did. You, yes, we all did. Yep. Learned yeah. The feature. We also have an app on here <clears throat> called Easy Learning. There you go. Begin beginners. And it helps okay. you with different things too. Yeah. It's, okay. a, it's on your iPad. It's a green, a green app. I mean, color. It looks like a handicap sticker. I don't think mine. Oh, Easy Tablet Help. So, how do you go? get to it? Settings. It's on your iPad. It's Did she on go your, to settings? Your, no. Oh, you see it. Apps. Can you oh, see it? Oh, bottom, right. bottom right. Bottom right. Bottom right. Oh, I see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a handicap, but it's green. Oh, yeah, yes. you I see that. It teaches you a lot of stuff. It teaches oh. you a lot of stuff. Oh. Thank oh, you. Oh, thanks for that. Uh -huh. Thank you. Yes. Good thing to oh, know. Wow, this is um, me. Hey, Teresa, um, the, this app that you're using right now, it is a little outdated. So I recommend the tips app. That's a little, that's a little more updated for the recent version. So, um, if you have, so if you find the tips app, it's a yellow icon that will give you more updated information than this. Is it on the, is it on the homepage? Yes, it should be on the home page, but you can all it's so it's that icon oh, right here. It's a light bulb. It's, it's a like light a light bulb, a yellow light bulb. Yeah, it's that yellow light bulb, Teresa. Tips. Oh, okay. Tips. The yellow light bulb right yes. here. Yes, that, that is a better app because that the other one is a little uh, outdated. So that okay, gives tips. tips on how to how to do like screenshots. They have to show you an image and you can hit the top left uh, box to view more things about. Um, different things you can do on your iPad. Okay, oh. yeah, that's good to know. And then which, there you go, all the different ones. Thank you, Alex. Did you see that, Geraldine? Now, yes, right. I see yes. that. I see it. Nothing. So there you go. Just keep playing yeah. with your. Keep going. Uh huh. Keep going. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> I Good job, with, Alex. <laughs> yeah, I played with my iPad yesterday, and I do mass in the morning from the Magnificat, and oh. I call them, and because I'm a registered person, they gave told me go to the Blue app, and I went to the Blue app. Now I can use my iPad for listening to the service. Okay. And then I so told then I'm sure sure there's I uh, they gave me word, but you have to pay for that. But if you use a Magnificat, I'm a, a subscriber, then I got it and I can do and it's better because I make the the um letters larger and it's better than the missile that I've been using all the time. So mm -hmm. So, as one person says, they go by the Bible. Well, maybe you can you can probably find the Bible uh, that uh, online, and you might mm -hmm. it might be free. There's the St. James version, and then the and there's the Roman Catholic version. The Catholic and Catholic is with a small C. Just remember that we Catholics are not really yuck. We, we do include other people. So we do that. Thank you, so, Barbara. All right. Yeah. We're going to go to Teresa now. Teresa Durbin. Go ahead, Teresa. Your hand is up. Uh, yes, uh, Teresa, I, 
I put it in the chat. I just wanted to say while you're all talking, um, I went and found the app and I'm really, really happy. I have a larger cursor and I changed the color. So that oh, was a big did? for me. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Look, did you hear that, Barbara? Yes. I am so excited. I mean, it's really good. You, I'm very excited. It's a big thing for me. Oh Go my on. goodness. Look, Barbara, see you there. She tried it and it works. And it works. Okay. You know, the person who has the something all around their frame. I like to see their face, but they got a frame with all the happy faces around it. That's Jack. <laughs> Jack. Here I am. <laughs> Here you are. <laughs> oh, there you are. Uh -huh. there you oh, that's sweet. That is sweet. Yeah, that is different. You wanted to see her face. Yeah. Yes, that's sweet. Very sweet of her. All right, Anita, go ahead. Anita. Yes, um, I want to know if I download the uh, Kindle app. Can I use? Oh, let me. I'm sorry, this is my phone. I'm so sorry. Um, can I download uh, the uh, voiceover and use that so I can uh, use the? Uh, uh, I'm sorry. They said, said voiceover will work with a lot of third-party apps, so it's okay. most likely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you have call the help desk on it, though. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. I'm going to have to leave. All right, but have a good one. All right. And Ruth. All right. Thank you. Go ahead and unmute. Okay. Unmute. Ruth, I'm asking you to unmute your device. You need to look for the icon. It looks like a microphone on your tool zoom toolbar. If you tap on that, you can unmute. Uh, Ruth, you're looking for the icon that's the on the on your toolbar, the very first icon on your toolbar. And it usually has a slash through it saying that you're muted. If you tap on that, you should be able to speak and then we can hear you. I'm not getting her to respond. We should just learn. Is she new, Alex? Is Ruth a new? I don't know where she's gone. Okay. All right. So uh, we've come to the end of today's um, session. I think let me just check the chat before I wrap it up. Um, fingers, the volume off. And also, there's also um, someone sharing. Stephanie saying you can turn off your volume in the control center of your iPad. How do you do the, the volume on your control? Anybody knows how? Before I tell you, anybody knows how to get the control center up? You drag, your your fingers. Fingers. drag your fingers drag. from the right corner down. Uh, there you go, right corner down. And oh, what I'm going to do. Oh, sorry. Can you repeat that? Um, put, your, uh, put your finger in the right hand corner of your screen and drag and, it down diagonally. And I just did that, and there it is. So, how do you turn on your volume here? Right? Well, let's look for the volume button here and see where it is. So this is your brightness over here. Um, so the volume, this is your volume here. Yep, this is your volume right here. And okay. Down. Okay. I think that was Adele. Okay. Here's your accessibility features here. You can go tap on that. Allows you to do use voiceover, voice control, magnifier, zoom. Okay. While we're in, you know, any questions on this control center? Everybody's okay with the control center using it and how to access it? I'm not. I'm new. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I do have some forgetfulness. And that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Um, so 
the control center is the shortcut to settings. It's okay. where you can immediately make changes to, for example, you can um, brighten up your iPad, make it darker or lighter using okay. this as I move down. You can lower, you can have your, you can lock your screen from rotating left or right by using this one that says lock. You can tap on that. You can set a timer using the, the timer icon right here. Um, you can turn the camera on right here to take a photograph. And so, but we cover this. We cover okay. it in the next second. Module. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank okay. you. And your name again? I'm Paula Braxton. Well, welcome, Paula. Welcome Thank you. To the team. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, I also have a couple of, of things I didn't know what to do that I guess I didn't get credit for, but I, you know, I'll just keep trying. I didn't just know what trying. I was doing. Yes, yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. And for those of you who are still on tomorrow lunch hour, we're gonna have a musical hour. We're gonna play music by request. So join us mm. at 12 noon. And tomorrow, come okay. Okay. Noon. We're gonna sing and singing and those who enjoy music at 12 yes. noon tomorrow. Do okay? we get credit for it? Do we get credit for it? No. <laughs> Just have fun. Look. <laughs> Oh, this is just a this is optional. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. <laughs> Mon thank you. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday is when we give credit for classes. Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays afternoon. And then of course the morning sessions, which is the at, at tech, I do a credit thing there because I like to award um the most attended ones at some point. I give away like three gifts or so on that attendance for that one. Okay. Because again, that's not mandatory, but for those who seek to learn and participate, I'd like to reward them with a gift. So in the next month or so, I'll be giving out the awards on the most attended events tech um, attendee. First, second. Miss Teresa, I'm yeah. sorry, I had, I had to step away for a minute. But um, should I call the help desk and ask about my AT&T card? Because I never got one, the gift card. For the first group? The, yeah, for the first group. Yeah, let them, uh, let them check the list because if you're on that first group and they said they mailed it to you, then something happened. And I can't say what it is because I don't okay. care. Me well, too, that, Teresa. Yeah, there's a couple of us on here that never got it. The people got, other people got yeah. so. I'm out of reach with that because I, I I submitted the list. They took it from there and sent send in um, the certificate, the um, um, gift certificate. Oh, I am now compiling the list now for the most recent one, and that will be um, sent to them by the end of this week. And then they'll begin to, to get those um, digital. This time it's going to be digital um, gift certificates out. Okay. Can you put our name on that list? Put, since we didn't get it, can you put your, our name on that list? She already put the name out. This is for uh, some, whatever, uh, this is where um, at and uh, had offered, it's over with now. If you attend two or uh, a minimum of two modules, you'll be eligible for a gift certificate of $25, but that's ended. It ended last Friday. That was special, a special funding for that. And that's over with, but we are getting more. I don't know when that will happen, but it was, it's on its way. I know we, we applied for it, so we're waiting. And then once I'll let you all know when that comes on board, okay? All right. All right. Goodbye for now. I'm gonna wish you all a, a pleasant evening and may God bless you and speak with you soon. Tomorrow. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon.